solely for the purpose of calculating tax rates. So if you look at that, you say, well, I looked somewhere and it said that there was spending was 17,000 per pupil. Another place I looked, it was 21,000 per pupil. And you tell me it's 15,000 per pupil? In this context, under these rules, this is what the number is. And this is the number which drives the, ta the tax rate. And the tax rate that comes out here is the equalized residential tax rate is $1.58.85. $1.5885. Because of our merging as a as two districts forming into a unified district, we're entitled to an eight cent uh, incentive. So that eight cents gets taken off the dollar fifty eight, and it brings out a dollar fifty, with some numbers at the end. The equalized non-residential rate is a dollar six two ninety. So somebody who has a business, that's what they're paying, or a second home, or somebody who lives out and is paying taxes on their second home here in town. That's the rate that they will pay. So the homestead, the equalized tax rate is less than the business rates. That's another way to describe that. Now, this looks fine and dandy, especially if we look over here, that there's a, there's a threshold tax rate, which is, is uh, calculated each year. And as soon as you get above that threshold, you start paying twice as much in taxes as you want to spend. So for every dollar you every two dollars you for every dollar you spend above that, you pay two dollars in taxes. But we're nowhere near that because we're down here at fifteen thousand something. The, the threshold for the maximum growth cap is seventeen thousand. So we're outside of that danger zone. That's always a concern that people like to, like to know. Are we above the threshold? Are we in the penalty phase, as they say, for the penalty box? No, we're not. We're nowhere near. $1.58, or what was $15,600 against $17,800. So we're, we're safe from the penalty, from being double taxed, is what people sometimes call it. So I'm going to go down, go down the page a little bit here to see how this sugars out, because it gets a little complicated. But it's, it's, it's important information to know because it will impact our discussion, especially on the expenditure budget. So there are all sorts of numbers in here. I talked a minute ago about the threshold. If we're spending per pupil is above that up to above that seventy thousand, we pay double taxes. We're, we're well below it, so we're out of that danger. There's another law, another regulation about the tax rate in in the in the merging situation that we're in. That the tax rate that results after the merger it cannot be more than five percent above nor five percent below what it was the previous year. So the equalized tax rate of FY18, the last year, the last time we voted, was $1.62. So this calculates what the range is that our tax rate must be this time, this year. So it must be between $1.70 and $1.54. For Rochester and for Stockbridge, between $1.70, it's the same because we have the same equalized tax rate, very similar tax rates. Last year they were not the same. This year they will be the same because we are a unified district. FY19. One of the things of being a unified district is that every member of that district gets the same tax rate. Every same gets the same equalized tax rate. So here, here we see that that uh, we calculated that the equalized tax rate preliminarily was $1.50 and it falls outside of the range of the 5%, so it cannot go below $1.54, so far as Rochester is concerned. So far as Stockbridge is concerned, cannot go below $1.54 or 60. So this is the one that rules, so that's what our, that's what our minimum, or what, our, or what our actual tax rate will be for next year based on this budget is $1.54.60, but our spending, only brings us to $1.5085. What that means is, and some uni unified districts have, have uh, discovered this, is that between $1.5085 and $1.5460, we can spend more and it won't affect our tax rate. Because our tax rate, if we spend more, it'll go to $1.51, $1.52, $1.53, $1.54, up to this $1.5460. At that point, it will start to increase. But there's additional spending possibilities. Now, that's under the current law. But there is 
legislation going through at the moment which says that retroactively, the legislature wants to say that that this cap will will be will not uh, will not be in effect for this year for FY19. So, so those districts that have been saying and some have been saying, well, we can spend more without paying more taxes. Um, and those districts have usually been wise enough to not spend on expenses that are recurring, so they come back next year. They've done one-time expenses like replacing a boiler or something like that. You don't expect to do that every year. So some one-time expenses have been <coughs> incurred more than was considered necessary because it didn't change the tax rate. If we, so in other words, if we are talking in the expenditure side or the revenue side for that matter, but if we're talking in the expenditure and we're trying to save $100, it's not going to change our tax rate. If we cut $10,000 out of the budget, it's not going to change our tax rate. If we cut $100,000 out of the budget, it's not going to take our tax rate because we cannot fall below the 5% from the prior year. So we can add to our expenditure, and if we reduce them, it's not going to change our tax rate. David, I don't want to interrupt you, but I just wanted to ask, the changes that we made today, are they reflected in the yes, numbers? They are. Thank you. So the reason why I came here about 15 minutes late today was that I was trying to get those last minute changes in. So now you have the hottest news. Mm. Uh, so what this says is that if you look down the bottom here, you see that the changes in the tax rate based on what's in the budget up there is a nine cent. I'm jumping over a few stages and I can go back and go through the stages, but the bottom line is that the homestead tax rate, what actually shows up in your tax bill, is going to be nine cents less than last year in Rochester, and eleven cents, almost twelve cents less than last year in Stockbridge. That's the net impact of this budget. That's so, in that context, understanding that changing the expenditures will not necessarily have a direct impact at all on the tax rate, because we've got between we've got about four cents in the tax rate here that. We can spend more before the tax rate goes up. We make any cuts so I can reduce the tax rate. Uh, given that, we just getting tired already. Um, and, and so the, this, is the, this is the bottom line: is, is about nine or twelve cents um, reduction with the budget as it is. Let me jump on, jump back then to the, uh, the revenue side of things. So the revenues begin by looking at any fund balance that's carried forward from a prior year. Now, we are not in a position, districts in general are not in a position to take the immediate past year fund balance and deal with it according to the law, because typically the audit takes place in the fall into the winter. And just last week, we got our, our audits in for the districts within our supervisory unit. And usually the budgets are, are approved in January. So it, there's usually a year gap between when you fund the fund balance. So this is not the fund balance as of June 2017. This is the fund balance as of June 2016, the audit that was completed about a year ago. And if there's a fund balance in there, and if the voters have not decided otherwise that they want to put that fund balance into a reserve fund for maintenance or for tuition or something like that, if there's no decision action by the voters, not the board, but the voters, then it, the law says it must be returned to the voters in the next available budget, which is this budget. So this fund balance is, acts like a kind of a revenue. It's available to offset the expenses that are down on the expense side of the budget. So in Rochester, at the end of, two, at the end of uh, June 2016, there was $200,000, the auditors said, $200,000 in fund balance in the general fund must be returned to the voters unless the voters decide otherwise. So here it's being returned to the voters in the FY19 budget. So we start with the fund balance, and then we have to have some revenue coming into Rochester in the next year, and a small amount of interest, a small amount of rental income, some sub-grants, which are from the supervisory unit, which are mostly the Title I CFP school-wide program funds. And we'll see how we spend them in a minute. Uh, small amount of miscellaneous stuff. So these are local revenues, and then 
these, these revenues are, are sorted by the source. So first local source, secondly state and federal source. So on the state side, these two numbers together make up the education spending amount, or they, uh, and they are made up of, of uh, the general state support grant, and an amount that the state pays to tech centers on behalf of the resident students of our district. Kind of a, it's trying to achieve a cash flow for the tech centers. It does it. So these two numbers together form the education spending amount. So you add these two numbers here and you get to that amount. And that's the difference between our total expenditures and the revenues from other sources other than the state grant. So this, this tuition, tech tuition paid by the state on behalf of the district is not an additional amount that the state pays to the tech centers. It's part of our education spending. Part of the difference between what we what we're entitled to, the difference between our total expenditures and these revenues and a few of these other revenues here. Uh, so it's the next what we got what we got to get money for to cover the rest of our expenses. That's what this, these two numbers together are. We have a few small uh, state grants, small schools grants, transportation aid, and some e-rate money, which we can probably put up there. It's, it's not really a state source. Uh, so bottom line is, these are the numbers, and they're in the this, in this, uh, second to last page of the handout there. You'll see that by, by each uh, town, the different revenues. This year, we have not included any uh, revenue from the trustee of public funds. In prior years, there's sometimes been, or for several years, there's been something like $60,000 in each town. If we know about that money, we can put it in here, and it will reduce the taxes but we've heard nothing about that so far, so we have put it in there. If we, if we don't put it in, it means that we will raise that amount of taxes. If it comes in, if the trustees decide next month that they're going to support the school districts by a certain amount, that money can come in and that will produce a surplus in the current year. We don't have to spend, we don't have to spend the money, the tax money that we raised that we didn't need to raise. Keep it aside and go into the fund balance at the end of fiscal year 18, the current, or 19, the current, that current, next current year, and it'll come back to the taxpayers two years later in the next budget, two years into the next budget. So these are the revenue sources. And now we, now we move to the expenditure side of the budget. Same as the other tax, tax sheet. So the total, the total budget is 3.9 million. The, the revenues from local sources here, from sources other than the state support grant, are a million dollars. So it's two, two million, 2.8 million is what is what the education spending amount, and that's what the state guarantees it will, it will get to us. And they will charge a tax rate in order to yeah, give that to us. Not that our taxes cover what we get back. Most districts in Vermont do not raise enough property taxes to cover their education spending. It comes from other sources. It comes from things like the lottery, and from the, the, there's, a, there's a grant that's made from the general fund of the state into the education fund of the state. There are various other sources that go into it. So there are very few districts in Vermont that actually um, pay, raise as much taxes from their property to cover their education spending amount. It's, it's usually significantly less. I was on the school board in Roxbury over the mountain here, and I made a presentation about eight years ago in which I showed that the property taxes raised in Roxbury were about $4,000 per pupil, and the spending was about $23,000 per pupil. About $5,000 came from second homes and from businesses. Not many businesses in Roxbury, mostly second homes. And the other, so that was nine out of 20, 23,000, so 14,000 came from other towns and other sources. So only 4,000 came from the residents paying through their property taxes. That's a little extreme, but it's not terribly unusual for us. A relatively small amount of the tax, of the total spending to be covered by what used to be called local property taxes, now state property taxes. So what we have here is we see, we see how the education spending get, amount gets identified. We divide that by the number of equalized pupils. And we come up with the education spending for equalized pupil, which is the number which goes in the tax calculation. And 
by now probably most of you are familiar with what equalized pupil is. It's not a pupil that's, that's knocked down to size, so they all look the same height. Um, an equalized pupil is an attempt by the state in the tax formula. It's only ever used that I've seen in the tax formula. And it's an attempt to be made to recognize that certain kind of students in, it's with certain demographics cost more to educate. So if you've got a high school student versus an elementary student, um, there's more specialized courses, more specialized equipment, and so on that's needed for a high school student. So there's a weighting that's given to the W-E-I-G-H-T-I-N-G. Weighting, it's more weight given to a secondary student because it costs, that's perceived to cost more. Some people think that's nonsense, and they complained about it a few years ago, and the state went in and looked at it, and they said, you know, you're right. It's, it's not as much as we thought it was. So there was a time when a secondary student had a weight of something like a 1.23, and it's down now to uh, sort of much more like 1.15, some, something like that. There's also a weighting given for poverty. There's weighting given for um, uh, students who have English as not as their home language, English language learners, because it costs more to educate a, st a student like that. When I was working in Burlington, we spent $6 million on the ELL program in one year. That was our average spending on ELL. So that kind of weight makes a big difference for the city of Burlington, because there are 600 students in the ELL program. It's very big. From 60 different language groups. So coming right back to here, so here, this is the, the education spending for equalized pupil that goes into the tax formula. This is the threshold. So we're well under the thresholds. So we have the danger of paying, paying twice for the same expenses. Now we come to the expenditure side of the budget. Some of you have seen this layout, some of you this is totally new, so there's a lot of numbers on the sheet. Uh, the main number is in this column F. This is the number which, which ordinarily we would be, it would be the only column that we would see here. So the budget, for example, for general education instruction, for the Rochester Stockbridge Unified District, salaries for teachers would be $91,716 on the actual teachers that are currently here that we hope and expect will be back next year. So that's how we budget. We budget on people who are here and, and they'll be coming back. But the other, the other uh, columns are used for analysis and interpretation and to give uh, the board members and community members <coughs> and everybody who's interested an opportunity to understand what the numbers mean. One of the, one of the uh, considerations that was near the top in many of the decisions to form unified districts, or Rochester and Stockbridge to come together in a unified district, was to say, how do we know that the budget's going to be fair? And our children will get a, get a good shape compared to the children over there. And this is an attempt to show, not to prove, because these, these there are various uh, factors under here that mean that this is not a, a firm, definite proof, but it is a strong indicator. A, a good reason, a good explanation for why it's not a strong proof is that if you if you have a teacher over here with 12 kids, a teacher over here with 20 kids, and this one has 30 years experience and a salary up here, and with this one with one year, one experience, they're not, it's not going to cost the same. But it doesn't mean it's inequitable, necessarily. So, it's very hard to compare apples to apples, but these, the, this analysis here is an attempt to give some indication. So if these percentages were way off, we'd say, wait a minute, let's look into that a little bit more. It seems like in this area, oh, so you, you mean that, that in that school there are three teachers, in this school there are two teachers. Oh, is that, is that equitable? And there may be reasons why it is equitable, because of the number of classes, whatever it is, any number of reasons. What I'm trying to say is that these percentages are indicators, but not final proof. There are two percentages up here. The first one is the percentage by enrollment. <coughs> enrollment is, is a technical term that the state uses to describe a particular way of counting students 
um, in all the, all the districts of Vermont uh, during the <coughs> period, the 20 day period of the average daily membership count. In, in the middle of that period in the fall, uh, membership in a school, not attendance, so a child can be sick for every day of the, of, the, of, the, of the counting period and still be a member for all those days. So if they're enrolled there and a member, they count. The fact that they're sick doesn't mean that it affects the average daily membership. Membership is not the same as attendance. Attendance is a totally different thing. And obviously, we want all our members to be attending all the time. That's obviously important because then they can learn better. But we don't, we don't lose on the count just because somebody is sick. So but enrollment, so enrollment is one day's snapshot in the midst of this average daily membership count, which happens in the fall. So on October 1, the state takes out from that sample of 20 days, and it says on this day, in this school, there were so many students enrolled. And in that school, there were so many students enrolled. The, uh, and it can be that in a school like Rochester, which is really close to Granville and Hancock, that a number of the children from Granville and Hancock come to Rochester School. They are part of the enrollment number. They are not part of the average daily membership number. The average daily membership number counts only the students that are Rochester students in the Rochester School. So, so the ADM counts a different collection of students for a different purpose, just like equalized pupil is done for the tax purpose. It's not used for anything else. So there are different kinds of counts. And somebody will say, well, I thought that we had 100 kids in the school. How can our ADM only be 57? Well, of those 100 students, somebody were tuition students, and they don't count for our ADM. So there's different kinds of counts. So what we have here, and I'll get to the bottom of this so you can see the count, and how the percentage was the right edge. So right at the very bottom, if you have a copy, you'll see it on uh, Row 306, that in the Rochester, Rochester is a D, and stock is a D, R, S, it's easy to remember the sequence of things, um, that, that on October 1 last year, the most recent count that we had, the most current data, there were 90 students enrolled in Rochester School in the pre K 8s. Right, so the K 8, this is the K 8s, not the pre K. K-6. 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 Thank you. There were 90 in Rochester and 50 in Stockbridge. So that's where these enrollment percentages come from that you saw at the very top. Above here is what is you see the percentage of what the actual expenditures were that were allocated or identified for each town. So you can see that there's a reasonably close correlation between the enrollment percentages and the spending percentages so far as the total spending. On this side, we'll come back to it in a minute so you see what's up here. On this side, the green is the expenditures which are for personnel, for salaries and benefits of employees. And you can see that in this situation, uh, Rochester is, 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 uh, has 59% of the full-time equivalents, which is the measure of the level of staffing. One teacher for the whole year is a 1.0 FTE, full-time equivalent. And the cost of those teachers throughout all the different areas of the school, 63% of the cost of salaries and benefits for all people in both, in both schools. So these are the percentages that relate to the personnel, the salaries and benefits, and these are the percentages that relate to the non-salaries and benefit items. For example, supplies. So supplies are not salaries and benefits. They're not in the green banner over here. So what this is showing is that 63% of the personnel costs are attributable to Rochester, but only 58% are non-personnel. And there are reasons for that. There's not a direct, um, and one of the simple reasons could be that, for example, that uh, Rochester may have recently bought a lot of computers, so it doesn't have a lot of, this is just an example, hypothetical, to understand the concept. So they may, may not need to buy many computers this year, but Stockbridge may not have bought computers for a little while, 
so they're going to do some catch-up. So that would be a reason why these percentages would be different from the enrollment percentages, because the program needs vary by, by, by school. Just a point that came up in the last conversation about this, with the 90 and the 50, we know this is the October count. It may be a little different now. There may be three kids less in Rochester and three kids more in Stockbridge. But we wanted to stay consistent with that October 1 count because that's a, that's a pretty consistent measure of, of the count. So it's an official count. Otherwise, what would happen is that somebody would say, well, I want to choose February the 2nd. What was the count on February the 2nd? And you might say, well, I want to watch the 1st because it's more favorable to me. You might say, I want January the 29th. So we could have a long debate about which data to, to, to use for the count. But if we use one of the accounts, the counts which is used by the state as a standard date, that makes that seems to make more sense. The board could decide otherwise, and we could put different numbers in and see what difference it does if we had that amount of time. But I think this, this is the, the, way, the way we're starting here. So now let me go up into the detail of the budget. I indicated that it's done by grade level, by age level age slash grade level. So we start off with pre-kindergarten, the pre-kindergarten program. And we can see, you can see here that this is, these are the expenses. There's one, is it, is it one FTE for teacher in Rochester and one FTE for para, paraprofessionals, a support staff person in Rochester. The same in Stockbridge, 1.0 and 1.0. In fact, the dollar numbers are more or less the same. Uh, very similar. Other places, it's not the same, but in these cases, 45, 7, 45, 9, that's pretty close. Um, and so this, this tells you the total, total FTE and the total cost of these salaries and benefits in this green section, and the non-personnel is over on that side. So we start with pre-kindergarten, and then we go to the K-6 program. K-6 programs begin with the general instruction or the instruction of general education. And you can see that there's a lot of different things that come in here. There are salaries and benefits. There are the cost of field trips, excluding the busing. Busing for field trips needs to come in student transportation lower down. That's something that we have been working on since the last version of the budget. Uh, things like the internet connection comes in here, tuition. Rochester has one elementary student that is tuition to another district for particular educational purposes, reasons. There are things like books and software and equipment and things like that. And also the one planet program support is here in the instruction area. Some of these things have appeared in different parts of the budget in our year, but it seems to me that this is where they belong and we need an appointment in the state. Every one of these, behind every one of these lines is an account code that gets reported to the state periodically, and they use for a multitude of reasons, including uh, paying to the school districts uh, the general state support grant. So we begin in, in, in elementary, yeah, K through six is the, what the state calls elementary. That's the elementary grades. Uh, and so instruction for elementary, total of $675,000. With five FTEs of teacher in Rochester, three FTEs of teacher in Stockbridge, and one FTE of paraeducator in Stockbridge. I'm not going to go through all of the budget, but I'll go through a few of the areas so you get a feel for how things are. After the general instruction comes remedial instruction, and this is a part of the budget which is funded with grant money. So Title I money, which is a federal grant, um, we, we identify a section of that grant, we get a significant size grant, and we identify a section of it for, for sharing amongst the districts for what are called school-wide programs. It's a way of spending federal money with uh, with more flexibility, so you don't have to account for things in quite as precise a way as you do if you have, for example, in the Title I program, you could say, I'm going to, or we as a district are going to spend it on, uh, on, on, a, on a math interventionist. And then if you've got it very narrowly defined, then you have to account for it very narrowly. But if you have a school-wide program, it's much, much the, the reporting requirements are much simpler, it takes less time, 
and this is with a serious SI uh, challenge. So that's one of the reasons why we, we in uh, many districts in the country, um, have developed school wide programs which are primarily there to, to uh, provide additional resources to the instructional program of the school, to bring students up to speed, to help them to stay in, 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 in uh, on pace and so on. Once we've dealt with general instruction, then we come to the, the, uh, the arts program. So we have arts, and physical education, and music. Programs. 
this is a new function that has not used, shown up previously in the budget, and it's something that we seem to be wanting to, to, to keep, keep an eye on. So the numbers always been in the budget is buried somewhere. So now it's pulled apart so we can see it. So there are three kinds of, of, of expenditures that are for improving instruction. Um, development of curriculum, training, how, how, do we, how do we teach math in the 21st century, that kind of thing. And finally, the testing of students so that we can understand just exactly what kind of support they need in education. Not emotionally, education. So this, so this is all to do with instruction. The next, next set of areas is to do with administration. The library is an important part of it. It's now called a resource center because it's much more than just a place to keep books. So there are all kinds of resources in the library. And again, from the, the state point of view, the library is a resource to support teachers who are instructing. So that's, that's why it's listed in this area. And after that, we come to the traditional administration areas. So first of all, within District, we have principal services, the services of the principal's office. So you can see it's much more than just the salary of the principal. There can be administrative assistance. So in, in Rochester, there's 1.5 FTE of administration assistant, and in Stockbridge, there's 1.0. And there's all these other kinds of expenses that relate to what the state calls school-based administration, school administration. So the school administration, which is here, and then there's central administration, which is what happens in the supervisory unit office. We'll come to that. The technology administration is a category which may be new to some of you. It's been part of for a long time. There's been an assessment for several years has been an assessment for technology administration, or sometimes just called the uh, assessment for technology. Um, there are two kinds of technology from the state's point of view. There's technology which is related to improving instruction, sometimes called tech integration, which is a service which is provided by certain kinds of professionals certified to do so. They are often closely related to the librarian or to the media center. And their work is to work with teachers. So if you want to, if you want to be doing a social studies project on um, the Civil War, what kind of resources are available technology-wise? That's what the tech integration is going to do. It would help teachers to locate websites and various other kinds of resources that are on, on, on the internet. And that, that we don't have much of that. But we have a, quite a lot of costs involved in keeping printers working and making sure that people know how to sign on and sign off and sign on again next time. Um, make sure that, that the, the wiring is working effectively, that the connection with the internet is up and running and at the right speed. So the administration of technology is what this is about. And some of that function happens at the central office and some of it happens in the school. And it varies by district. And there's a certain, there's an assessment for grants administration. In order to obtain the, the grant that we talked about earlier, the Title I school-wide program grant, there needs to be an application, there needs to be various reporting of various kinds. That administration of the grant is done centrally, and the share that comes to Rochester Stockbridge Unified District is $6,000 a year. It's part of what previously was called the central office assessment. But now we're seeing that if we didn't have the central office, we'd still have to do grants administration. It's our expense, the district's expense, it's not the superintendent's expense. It belongs to the district. And each of these assessments are, if we didn't have administration there, we'd need to, to hire somebody. And many districts do hire people to administer their, their network and, or whatever it is. Coming down to buildings and grounds, that's another area that's very familiar to people. of expenses. We have custodians or people who take charge of the buildings and grounds and take care of it. In Rochester, we have 2.0 FTE of our salaries for uh, that we're looking for for next year. And in Stockbridge, we're looking at 0.63. Um, 
Carson Guard is in here. You, and previously, it was in support services for students in your budget. And the reason why it's in here is that the state considers this crossing guard as part of security. And so there's a code which, when I when I report to the state about what we spend on the crossing guard or on bus monitors or something like that, that goes into this area here, which is to do with the security. So it very, it's not exactly building grounds, but it's closely connected to it. Snow removal is in here, various things, so fuel oil, and utilities, and that sort of thing. So that's, that's where that goes. And we're still in the area of the, the K6. So we're still in elementary spaces. Then there are student transportation costs for the K6 students. And there are field trips. So the second grade class is going off to the Munchai Museum or going off to see the Science Museum in Boston, we spend our night there. So that's where the transportation piece of that trip would come. The cost of going into the museum would be up in the field trip expense, up in the instruction area. But the cost of transportation to get there, just like with, with every aspect of, of the budget, if we're talking about the athletic program, the cost of the of the baseball and the bag would be up here in, in athletics. But the, the transportation for getting the team to the to the competition would be down here in student transportation. So whatever kind of transportation is for students, whether we're talking about taking students from home to school and back each day, taking them on a field trip, taking them to an athletic trip, whatever kind of student transportation we're talking about, it all belongs here, different categories. So this assessment for transportation, this was a change that took place in legislation about three years ago. Uh, maybe four by now, and the state said that transportation must be purchased and controlled by the supervisory union. If we do not see the supervisory union doing that and having expense in its accounts, every year when I do the report at the end of the year, I have to show where every district and the SU spend all this money. So they said if it, if it shows up in the school and not in the supervisory union, there will be no reimbursement the next year. There will be no revenue for transportation aid the next year. It has to be spent, and that's why transportation got pulled out of the school, the transportation going from home to school and back. The other transport, so that's what the assessment is for, just for the home to school and back. Field trips and clinic trips are still charged at the district level to the schools that do those trips. So transportation is now divided between the home to school and back, which is paid for, which is organized and paid for by the supervisory union, by all, and field trips and, and sporting trips, which can be organized locally and paid for locally. Debt service, <coughs> by debt service, the state means long-term debt service. So we're talking about bonds, things like that. So in Rochester, there's still a bond outstanding. So that's the amount that needs to be paid for the principal next year, is the interest that's paid. There are no bonds that I could find for stockbridge. There's another kind of interest which shows up in the Let's shop it further down here now. In the, uh, the short term interest that we pay on, on the tax anticipation note, in order to have cash flow coming in so that salaries can, and purchases can be paid for before taxes are collected and sent by the towns, we need to take out a loan typically. It's very common for, uh, for districts to take out a loan in anticipation of the taxes coming in. And that interest is not charged here. That's not a long term debt. This is long term debt. That's short term debt. It gets paid off by the end of the year once the tax has come in. It just gets paid off. But it's, a, it's a cash flow management tool. Food service is a part of the budget where, coming out of the general fund, there's, there's a, a decision made to support the food program, the food meal program, uh, for students because it's considered just as having paper and pencils as necessary for education. Students that don't have anything, anything in their stomach, they can't learn. So that's the rationale usually placed for putting a, a support for the food service program. The total of all the, the K-6 programs for both schools for next year is here where the, these hashtags are because there are too many digits on the format that I have. A microcomputer screen looks fine, but on here it doesn't. But you've got the printout where it shows the actual number. So then we go into this, this what are often called secondary student costs. And the 712 program is a secondary student cost, and there are three kinds of costs here. They're all tuition related because we don't, next year we will not be operating any school 
either in Rochester or in Stockbridge to, to educate, to instruct our secondary students. So this, this number here is for general education, tuition, and for the students that have been identified and the places that we understand that they intend to go next year, this is the, this is the cost. This is not a number pulled out of the sky. This is looking at specific students and specific choices that they've made for next year. And we understand the students change their mind, families change their mind. So this is a fluid number. It can look different next time you look at the budget. We try and keep it up as we, as we get information. We try and update it so that it's the most current information that you have. But what it's showing is that for secondary students, we are needing to, to send out $1.18 million for tuition payments. That's, that's the first line. The second line is te technical center tuition. And there are two pieces to it. The one is the part that we pay directly, and the other part is what's paid on our behalf by the state. We saw it on the revenue side that they take some a portion of our education spending money out and send it straight off to the tech center. That's the same amount as this one here. So the, we never see that money, but we have to report it as a revenue and an expense of equal size. And the really weird thing about this, it's got, it's got nothing to do with the students that this year, are, FY19, are going to the tech centers. The tech centers have a formula system, and I won't go into too much detail, but it basically says that over a period of four or five years, <coughs> the cost of a student this year is paid over the next four or five years. One sixth, one third, one third, one sixth, so four years. So if somebody says, well, we've got four students at the tech center this year, well, we've got no students at the tech center. Why are we paying tech centers? Because we are part of the four-year trailing average that, that we have to pay for. So we never pay in the current year for the students that are attending the tech center this year. Unlike these students, so a student that's going to another school district this year, we pay this year. Tech, tech education is different. These two, so this one is what the state pays on our behalf, and this is the balance. So it may be that the state pays $7,000 per student to the Randolph Career Te Technical Center on our behalf because the students live in Rochester and Stockbridge. And then, the, so that maybe is you know, 7,000, so, and maybe uh, Randolph Career Tech Center charges 13,000, so the other 6,000 comes from us, so that's where they come. So they send 7,000 on our behalf per student, and we pay the other 6,000 per student to make up the total amount of the announced tuition for the tech center. some programs that go across all the grades, right from pre-K all the way through to 12th grade. In future, I'd like to pull this number apart because that's a very big number, and it would be even helpful to just have a better understanding of how that special education assessment is comprised. Um, but right now, what it shows is the cost of instruction in special education and also support services in special education. So if a student is receiving special education services for assisting with mathematics, that would be the instructional piece. If they are receiving speech and language pathology support, that would be the support services piece. And right now, they are both combined, so we, we don't really see the difference between what's instructional and what's support services. Then we have the school board, whose oversight is over all of the above. So they're not just a, they may think that they're just looking after the pre-K-6, but they're responsible for the 7-12 as well. Just like anything else. So they're over the whole, all the grade ranges. The super, likewise, the superintendent office is responsible for all the grade levels. And the business office is responsible for all the grade levels. So you can, you can see that, whereas you may have been accustomed to seeing the superintendent's office or the central office, sometimes it's called that, Central office might be several hundred thousand dollars of assessment. When we pull apart the services that we get from, that the district gets from the, the central office, what's left for the cost of the superintendent is just 39,000, and you can't even get a decent car for 39,000. <laughs> so don't even go there. Um, in the business services, there are two, two expenses here. One is the assessment. So for the central office staff that does the business work, which includes human resources and payroll and accounts payable, the share that belongs to 
Rochester Stockbridge Unified District is 60,000. <coughs> this is the other interest, the short term interest that we pay on the tax anticipation notes. It's a small amount, but it belongs to the business office according to the statement. So that's what it's there. So if we look down the bottom here, if I change the font size, you'll be able to see what these numbers were. You've got it on your handout. Um, but but this, is, this is basically an overview of the uh, run, and a run through the various sections of the expenditure budget. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm sure I've spoken for long enough to sit down and be ready to take questions. <laughs> Schools grant for uh, uh, Rochester is is the correct figure for this year. Okay. Um, the we, we had a question that oh, we, he said yes. Oh, he has clarified. Good. No, I don't know. I, I didn't hear. Her. I couldn't. No, he's not. He said he's no, not. Yeah, I, thought, I thought he said he has not yet he, he found whether whether the, the the state is changing the number because the state. I mean, it, the state is. This, the, the number reflects what we received last year. It's been a, there's not been a lot of clarity from Montpelier as to whether right. that number would be changed uh, because of the change in uh, uh, students that are here or not. Um, the uh, in, in, in transportation, does that number include anything for co-curricular uh, co transport kids moving between between campuses for any programming? Not specifically. It does include some joint field trips. Right. Okay. Perhaps some joint field trips. Yes. Okay. But if, but if we were if we were moving kids between schools to work on a show or to uh, do something like that, we haven't we haven't put any any money in for that yet. Um, lastly, the uh, the things that you pulled out. I'm assuming that the I mean they they had all been in the central office, uh, just the plain old central office assessment. When you pulled them out, you used the same the, the same assessment formula. Okay. Those were the, the, the technical questions that popped to my mind. Does anyone else on the board have questions? No, but I did just want to comment um, that I was, you know, quite encouraged looking at our our uh, per pupil spending that we're at fifteen thousand six hundred in this budget, and that our um, tax rate. Uh, how, how nicely we were able to attain. We're actually so far below uh, what we're allowed to have. So we're in really good shape with even what's sitting in front of us right here. I have a lot of questions. Can we start from the top and go down? And if anyone has questions, Dr. Um, I have a wonderful question on, is, has Winter Wellness been moved, the funding for both schools programs into the budget? The Winter Wellness? Yes. Um, our winter wellness ski program. We were we were asked to put that for both schools into the budget. What line would that be on, David? Field trips is what I believe we had decided last time. Those field and trips and field trip busing. I'm not sure if would, be would that be 42? Line 42. It would be transportation and student costs. It'd be line 42, 42. field trips. We have uh, a combined of 12,060 for combined field trips for our district, and then our bus it, uh, field trip busing is at 12,190. It's in on it's in on the Rochester side. I okay, we just can't sure it's on top of the numbers. Stockbridge. Well, the, the Stockbridge side includes. Um, trip to Key Wayden and also um, uh, as far as I was told uh, they'd like to take a trip to a zoo somewhere and I tried to beef up this Rochester side so that they could maybe do a joint trip for both of those things. Right, but where's um, the, the, the Stockbridge ski program? I think is the question. Yeah, I think we need to get those numbers and, and depending if you want to stick with Millbury Snowball or if you want to go a different route Stock 
Lethbridge side does not include the ski program. Okay. So that needs to be added. Mm -hmm. But Rochester side does. Yes. And, I, and, and the mileage for the Rochester side is 1895. So I'm guessing if you put what 2100 in there, it was the it would be the extra miles to Stockbridge. So that's, that's just they wanna, that's just a mileage piece. Yeah. Direction. If they choose, you guys choose a different direction. That's, I'm sure we definitely work that out. I mean, unless they chose another ski area. Well, the big thing is that skiing needs to be in the budget so the kids can ski. Right. Just one thing I wanted to make the board aware, we did look into, um, and I think it was Riker, I think it was the cross country area, um, that can't take both schools at once because they don't have enough small size boots. Right. We tried to see if we could do that, and I'm, I'm pretty sure it was on the cross country side that they didn't have uh, the right number of, enough sufficient size equipment to take all the little kids at once. But to Megan's point, it, it, where it happens is neither here nor there, we just want them to get out right. there skiing. Yeah. It's, that the program's important. Yes. I don't think in terms of Holbrook, uh, the outdoor center, that we have to add anything for Stockbridge if it's not in there, because our one bus isn't going to fill up with just Rochester kids. There's right. going to be plenty of room for Stockbridge's fifth graders or whatever grade decides to go. Um, <coughs> Do you guys go to Starbase? Or? Actually, yes, and, and we're getting Starbase lined up with, um, we're going to send our, you guys go every other year, every the fifth other and year. sixth graders. We're going to send just our fifth graders every. next year, and then we're on the every other year sync together, because our sixth graders have already gone. Specific um, work, and she'd like to work with Mr. Brown, the fifth and sixth grade teacher, to try to um, to work uh, one of them work on literacy and, and social studies, and the other one to work uh, in in math. So you we could try to do what they are really good at, each of them. And so uh, the the hope was that we would uh, be able to. Um, have the time in the budget to be able to make that split and, and those those kids would be worked with with both of those teachers. So if I didn't put it in in math in the right place, there but was- But where a, would she be then? Yeah, that's-, that's the I'm not sure we, we backed it out that way. I think it's under instruction um, in the general category. But there's only three. There's only three FTEs. Well, uh, 
she, before she left just a little while ago, she said it was in the wrong place. That's why I'm saying it to you. Okay. It's right here. It's L54. There are three individuals. Under remedial? She's a first, third, and fifth grade math. math. But that's where she said to put it. So I, we're, we're working with her on making sure that's categorized. Regardless, she's in here, though. So there are three positions that are in that 1.2. A very okay. small portion of it interventionist. Right, I was wondering where to put And there's a, a math person and there's the remedial teacher. So there are three, the point six point seven. I'll make sure we clarify that tomorrow. First question, why did um, art go up point one for Rochester? Uh, because we believe that there were too many classes for her to teach within the time allotted, um, <coughs> that there are uh, there was a need to uh, give a little more time in art to be able to accommodate the number of kids that needed to be there. It so, went up to a point five, but the salary went down by five thousand. Um, I don't know about the salary, but I put in the position. I pumped up the position. David, do you know why the salary might have changed? Did we back something out of there? It's possible that the previous calculation of the salary was not as accurate as it needed to be, because I, I didn't check that. I didn't come comfortable with that number, because I didn't check the subject out. So, so we just tried to right-size it according to the amount of classes that we're going to be seeing. And under the same category of art, I'm curious why the fiscal year 16 and 17 art was 35000 and 36000 but this year without the high school, it's 32000 <laughs> Where are you looking? Um, number 73. Right. 73. And what was it, Jenny? Um, fiscal year 16, it was, or I have written down 16, 17, it was 35 and 36,000 approximately. For 16, 17? Right, that's what it says in the town report anyways. And you're not looking at salary, you're looking at the total The arc. total. I, I didn't have the report with me last week. So the week idea is it's, a, it's, a, it's the high school position being paid. I'm sorry, what's your question? Just, uh, just um, so the art question. total number, line 73, mm -hmm. fiscal year 16 and 17, the actual amounts were 35 and 36,000. And that's with the high school. So now without the high school, we're at 32,000. It's only a $3,000 difference, it seems irrational. And I also noticed that on the the guidance, I believe the guidance total was question. about the same as well as the administrative assistance. Well, let's just go back to the art for a second. Um, so point five would be um, uh, how many classes? See, I think that's what people have to understand about these classes. The high school didn't take up like a full half of right. the schedule. Right, well, that's what I was wondering, is how many classes with the kids, the elementary would be? Well, we have a uh, pre-K, and then we'll have a K, and a one, a two, three, a four, five, and a five, six, so there'll be six. So six. seven through 12 didn't have art class? Not always. Not always. Depends what they were taking, depends what the Right, because you think was. about when you're in high school, you don't have to take art for four years in a row. At both. We usually take it. And I right. think that's what Cynthia said, that there was a high school art class. There was one high school art class, right? They only had one art class. They had one art class. Now, the elementary, it's different. They must take right. it, and they all have to right. take it. Yeah, so it's... In high school, I believe drama and language are both considered arts. Right. Drama is. is. Is language too? I believe language Okay. Is. Right, so there's your difference. Well, they have a language budget. That could be right. Well, we're running high school. It's a um, little different. Why, um, Sorry, what, what? Could, you, could we could we refer to the number line that you're yeah. Yeah. Uh, 107? Mm -hmm. so, yeah, maybe Bonnie could speak to this as, as it relates to guidance. We did, and, and the model we're opting for now, Carrie, is, is we have, I've recommended in the draft of this budget that we keep the guidance position at full time. And one of the rationales there is that sometimes with some of our families, there are so many people working with them, they can't sort out the system and there's frustration and 
sometimes they withdraw from services. One of our thoughts is that we would have the guide, well, our thought is that we would have the guidance council pick up the SAP responsibilities, as well as trying to do some additional outreach with some of our families. I don't know if this is the case in Stockbridge, but in Rochester, we have a significant party and absentee problem that we also have to start doing outreach to families for if we're going to change that picture. Um, in the, the, in the, the previous rendition for Stockbridge, it was a point three, which is a day and a half. In this rendition, it's it's two days. So that was bumped a little bit because we really, we've got some kids that need some significant help and we needed a guidance counselor another half day. Uh, I'm not sure that's even enough, but that's what we did. Is this? And, and shut me down quickly if I can, but is this a, a possibility, a full-time position that we could share? Between schools? Um, well, uh, I both. mean, because then you really pay somebody a full, full, and they're going back and forth, and then you're really getting the, because, you know, the, this is one of those things that, in e equity wise, you know, we get a full time, and why aren't we thinking both schools? Both, both, both schools love their guidance counselors. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm going to put it right out there. They really like the people that work in those positions. Uh -huh. um, so, yeah, we could do it, sure. But I want you to know that yeah. that right. they, we, they we, do good work. They they've done, you know. We're trying to hold on to good people. So. Right, and, and I thought one of the questions we had had that uh, you were going to follow up with with the Stockbridge guidance counselor was to do the same thing there, there that uh, Bonnie's advising to do in Rochester and to move the SAP responsibilities if she has the time and, and the capacity to take. Would she get schedule. that? Would she get that funding? And then. Yeah, the funding's about, uh, I think it's, it's on the line there. Seven. Around $7,800. 7, yeah, and wrap that into the guidance. Yeah, well, she's got to work another half day. I mean, I don't know whether that's enough. It might not be enough, but that's I what agree. I did. I from last, just, from you know, last edition to this one, there's another half day in there. Mm -hmm. And the only thing I would say, Bruce, Bruce I'm just going to take an alternative look at this a bit. I, I really believe that... The Rochester School, as it is with its 90 kids, is a full-time position for a guidance counselor. I don't know that we could share it and not be cutting back on some things we think we need to do. Well, with. fair enough. I just uh, looking at you know um, guidance. If guidance is a very important position and we've got somebody very good there at Stockbridge, then shouldn't we be trying to get them yes, sure. 0.5, whatever is going to get some insurance or something like that? I mean, if, you know. I, you're right, and that is a very, it looks on paper like it's a very inequitable yeah. situation. Uh, but I'm just being honest with you about. Uh, no, I think you're right. We're not going to give her up. I mean, everyone adores her. <laughs> but I'm just one that case. Well, but I wonder if we could just. Right well, I mean, this what you see is what you get here. That's it. Um, but why can't we just. I think there are significant problems, behavioral problems at Stockbridge that we should even up her yeah. the, more. the problem is that she's shared with another school. So you I can't have her, her so to the point where she, she won't be able to, I, I know she works at Killington uh, part time. So I'm just trying to. Could we see if we could do at least a point five? Well, if you're interested in that, we yeah, could. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we certainly could, I, I mean, I, you know, Bonnie's Bonnie's comments made sense last week. I think they yeah. do they do here, which is if we could if we could drop the SAP uh, a, a counselor money and roll that over to Mary and have her do the same thing at Stockbridge that the counselor is doing at Rochester, where you have you know more of one point of contact for the families and all that. If, if I, I, and I, I, you mentioned last time that, that she was working. Uh, uh, she, she does have other obligations, but if she's got the capacity. I think I would rather have her be, you know, expand her presence at the school and not have, uh, you know, someone coming in from, from Claire Martin or wherever the SAP person right. comes from. Who's disconnected yep. from the school. Good. So we're saying yes to point five here, or we yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see what she's doing. Well, yeah, yeah, <laughs> and we're in the, and to, 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 to pay Peter, we're we'll Rob SAP Paul. Good. Which is fun, in which we get grants for, but. Uh, we get revenue for SAP. Going. But I thought Bonnie was the way Bonnie is doing it by the by the, by the counselor doing the SAP. You still get the revenue because. Do you get the, the revenue from the, if the guidance does the SAP? I'm not sure though. Okay. Yeah, we write the grant. We get the money. It's revenue. Thank you. That okay. does answer that question. So would she get benefits? Um, is I don't, David. The question is, would she get benefits for being a uh, 
half-time person. There's a threshold that you have to go Point over six. in order to get Betty's. Point six. And we would not be, it would be two different schools, two different districts. 15, I don't know what she does. It's, 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 it's always a, possible, it has been for, for years, to have people part-time in two different districts where one district says, we'll put the we'll clock up benefits, we'll charge you for the portion that you, the other district wants. So, so right. in, in Roxbury, for example, Roxbury and Williamstown would share a, a phys ed teacher, and Roxbury would take on the responsibility of uh, offering the benefits, and then they would charge three days a week's worth of benefits back to, or two days a week's worth of benefits back to. That's, in, 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 in situations in, in the past with doctors, that's exactly how it's been handled. Our uh, a previous music teacher, we, we paid, uh, she was point four in, Red, in uh, Reading, uh, or somewhere, and then point two in us in two other districts, and the, the, at least the way it's, the, the, at least in this area, the way it's been handled is whichever district employs her either first or for the longest is the district, is the district that offers the benefits, and then that, that district back bills the supporting districts, whatever their, their share is, because it's hard enough to get someone to, to, to come to your school one day a week to tell them, oh, you can come here one day a week and not have any kind of uh, health insurance or retirement benefits makes, makes hiring impossible. Well, you understand that there is a benefits package even our portion of it and would follow that decision. Correct. Um, is so this it's not a straight salary deal, it's more than that. Right. Is, it, it is this something that could happen, this negotiation, does it have to be in place before we vote on the budget? Or is it something that could be negotiated afterwards? I would like you to be fully aware of what you're doing before you so vote on So we have the numbers budget. so that we would have some sense of what that our share might be, a 50.5% of right. health and insurance would be. Could we get that number? You write these down, David? Yeah, he is, I see him. <laughs> or he's writing something. Going backwards to music, we'd increase the, oh, no. oh, I'm sorry. 85. 85. We increased the stock rate from 0.2 to 0.4, but the salary only went up $300. <laughs> But it, it's, it's That's a good question. It should be more. Should we hear the question, David? I think so. It's the question about whether this salary is sufficient. So number 85, <coughs> the music teacher, we had a point two for Stockbridge. Um, and we changed to point four, but the salary only went up $300. Actually, before, we didn't have a listing for FTE. But she was working point two. Yeah, we bumped we bumped that up another day. So, but I don't I don't well, I can't speak for the salary part of that's it. That's not at all. A week salary. No, I, I think that number is incorrect. You should double check on uh, 85M, which also would affect obviously 85O and 85F. Yeah, and depending on how he calculates FICA and uh, worker, yeah. workman's comp, if, that, if that's the, the if that's a if that's a percentage formula in cell uh, M87, for example, when that salary number changes to 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 a more accurate number at M85, it's going to bump that up as well. Just so you know, we're standing behind the scenes here. Brian Harris has a variety of different ways of doing this. All happening at the same time. So sometimes there was just a number dropped into the salary, and sometimes there was an FT, and sometimes there was uh, something that was connected to the teacher's group, or something like that. And what I'm trying to do is to keep it linear, so you'll see adjustments go from one group of work to the next, which is to do with getting a cost from present to a linear rational. Yes. Okay. And that even, even down to the workers' comp and unemployment insurance wasn't showing up. But it was it's in there somewhere, you just have to pull it out to put it in the right spot. Well I hope it's in there somewhere. <laughs> There's an amount in there somewhere. Whether it's the right amount, that's not the question. Right. Well, it's, yeah. Is the is the right. total amount correct? Between the supervisor and for that position? Is thirty-six thousand for a full-time FTE? 
what the one point three. Oh, well, it depends on how long the teachers worked, and, and there's a lot of things that factor into that. Three credits. Yeah, okay. years that factor. But I'm just because that then. Yeah, they need to fix so those much. numbers. Yeah. We'll look yeah. at that number, and we'll we'll right size it. And that's that same one we were talking about, eating um, For music, for music. Okay. Salary. And moving on. Um, guidance. I don't know. Well, we did guidance. Did guidance. Sorry. Um, the nurse, 129, he had 0.5 and 0.5. I'm wondering why we changed mm -hmm. that. Thought we were good with that last time. Number plate, 129? 129. 129. 129. Oh, yeah, I got divvy. Well, I think, I think we, because of the, um, yeah, and, and we can change it back, but we thought that probably this was a more equitable split because of the number of students in each of the buildings. That right now, there's a, a the nurse is doing, I think, practically 80-10, right? 80 20. 80-20, I mean. So we really believe that by boosting up and pulling down Rochester a little bit and boosting up Stockbridge a little bit, we were getting closer to the true number of, of service. But so, we we also did mention. Still comes out the 1.0. So. Yeah, and this position is a position that is able to move out and need it. Yep. And that's, I think that's the point we made last time. In fact, I, right. th I thought I remembered we were going to leave at 50 50. Just that to, was my to, comment. Yeah, yeah, understanding that if a youngster with a high medical needs moves into either school, right. then you have to adjust that nurse's time. You can't right. say, no, they can't go down there because she's supposed to be here on Tuesday. Yeah. Um, so the, the nurse is going to have to let us know based on school needs right. where right. she that, needs to be. Right, and that's why we had gone to a 50 50. That's why we said we were just going to put that down, understanding right. it's going to change every right. year. Because right. it was 50 50. Last I'm going to change that, yes, to 50-50. The bottom line right. doesn't really matter. Yeah, the last it doesn't, no, but we talked about keeping it the same. Right. Um, no, that's what I think. From right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Any point of view, if, you're, if you say that it's 60-40 or 50-50, the same dollars that it gives. Right. But if you're saying that somebody goes to one office three days a week, another office two days a week, and is available across, it's a, it's a different kind of a situation, and it's up to you how you want to call it. So what do you want to do? What do you, want to do? you want to stay with 50-50, you want to go 60-40, it really doesn't matter. As long as the, the last line is one. Right. So, right. I guess it would be, it 50, seem more equitable 50, to the stock if they're, if they're looking at this budget for this first year and they broke it out. I think they want to say more, if they get more equity in terms of you know, That's not share. Even, but equal doesn't mean the same. Remember, right. our enrollment is 60% of the total enrollment. Their enrollment is 40%. So we should see a breakdown of 60 40. I and mean, I think in this particular, so to be equitable, to truly be equitable, you would see more of a 60% you know, but I mean, for this particular, I'm fine with 64. I just wonder why it was changed because we had talked about leaving the same. Well, I, I heard a loud cry in the last from the crowd in the last that they wanted equity in in, in the split between both schools, and I was re I was reacting to that. Um, I think you ought to take the percentages out and just put a 1.0 at the other end and. Yeah. know that they're going to serve the whole thing. Yeah, that's a good idea. For the music, too. Well, if you can, I don't know whether that would be good. David allows that, but... Uh, right. And I think it's important for, for, for someone who's got regular, regularized duties you know, in, a, in a place to, to have it accurately reflect the percentages. See. There's really no place for her in Stockbridge anyway, so... Seriously, I mean... We're, we're going to get to that. Yes, that piece. we are. All right. Um, so how do we get it? How do we get it? You get it. Do whatever you want. Six, keep it. Keep it at sixty forty. Yeah. Keep it at sixty. Okay. Um, I know. I crossed it three different times. Me too. I don't think we care. So, um, one eighty line eight one eighty administrative assistant. Um, and this gets to the bigger question of buildings. Uh, which starts, you know, with buildings and grounds, but uh, why 1.5? I made that recommendation for 1.5 being based on um, 
usage based on um, demands on Lisa's time, based on the fact that I, I know it sounds a bit of a stretch, but 90 youngsters generate just that much more trips, just that many more phone calls, trips to the office, kids who are sick, um, et cetera, et cetera. So we have two this year. And we went, we're going back to 1.5, and the thought is someone would be at the front desk to handle all those other things, that three, three and a half hours in the morning, so that Lisa could get all of the myriad of financial and personnel things that she does, and then she would take over that front desk in the afternoon. Good. I, I accept that. Um, there, was 10 days, there were 10 days added to the Stockbridge administrative assistant on her contract. She currently it's works 194 days for next added year. for next year. We added 10 days to that, so it would be base, 204. Shouldn't the base salary of the two administrative assistants be the same? No. No, no because they have experience. different amounts of experience. Qualifications. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. The, the admin assistant is higher than what it was for the high, when the high school was opened in 17, it was 52,000. You know, there's a little, I just found this out the day before yesterday. I can't, I can't explain why, but what I can say is the figure for, for, um, this year is less than it actually is. The entire salary for the second administrative assistant's position is not in that line item. It's someplace else in the budget. I found a little note from the budget work last year, but I can't find but what the it is. What are you looking for? Was fifty-two thousand? You're looking for the administrative assistant salary for, for both administrative assistants. So line one eighty says sixty-four thousand. The fiscal year. 17 lists salary office manager finance and a salary receptionist and the total is 52,000. So why is that higher now? Well, it's two years later as far as um, salaries go, just 10, in. 10,000? Well, I didn't. Well, that's three, pe three people. Um, read me those people again you're reading out of there. Again. The Sorry. salary office manager finance is one, 40,000, yes. and the salary receptionist is. So I would like 10 to 12. Oh, that was their FY actual. Well, I know that we had a similar situation where there was only a part time over um, here in the high school. Um, and now is ryan a full-time right now we have two let, full -time let us if we're going to talk about names okay we have two full-time administrators okay two full-time there was One. a part-time administrative assistant over in the high school and that was not cutting it we thought we were really going to be able to do that so we had to we brought one back right as a full time so i'm not sure the budget is not showing that properly because of wherever somebody decided to put those lines, but I know we had tried it with a full high school to do just one and a half, but we weren't able to. And what I did is I tracked, you know, just anecdotally tracked responsibilities that the office assistant, the full-time administrative assistant has that handles payroll, finance, professional development, mandatory trainings, all that stuff, and um, decided that we could cut back a half a position, but I do not believe that the one administrative assistant can fulfill Won't all there the be efficiencies between the districts that we can do together? Jenny, policies? can I just say this last thing and then I'll answer that? So I don't think when we look at that, that we can fulfill all of the obligations that we expect of the uh, administrative assistant's position in Rochester with one position. I do think we're gonna need that half a position. I wonder if there's a different job description in Stockbridge. Maybe there there's different job responsibilities that um, our full-time administrative assistants might have taken on some additional responsibilities. When but we get to town voting day, are we going to be able to defend that? Because Bonnie's not on the board making this decision. Who can defend well, that? Well, we do have 90 kids that if they, you need to call all 90 kids, it's different than calling 50 kids. Well, don't you do a road phone? It's an example of you. I, I, it was just more of an example that there's that many more kids. It, um, and sometimes we have 12 kids that aren't accounted for, and sometimes we have 14, and sometimes we have two. And uh, those calls have to be made home to everyone to make sure the child, here's the child, there, where, where's the child. But to answer your question, Jenny, um, yes, I think after this board gets through its first year, you'll start.
start to find areas where you will you will find efficiencies. I think right now the boards are to the communities are learning to put a budget together and work together, and it's hard to know where the efficiencies can be. Have you researched how many schools with nine kids have and how many administrative assistants they have? I did not do that. But what I did is I looked very carefully at what the expectations here are of our community and our teachers, our kids, our parents, and, and determined that, yes, we could go down a half a position, but I really didn't think we could go down a full position and still meet all the obligations that we have. Um, and I just made my very best assessment of, of what I felt we needed to provide the same level of service because I don't think the service level is going to go down. I don't think anybody's going to expect less from this position. Um, and the reality is we don't have that many 7th through 12th graders here right now. So it's not like the workload is going to be cut in half um, for, the, for the folks who are here. It just doesn't translate into that. No, but a couple of years ago there were more students. And if they could just barely handle it then, can't they handle it now? All I can do is offer you my best assessment, which is we need one and a half. And what does everyone else think about that besides? We used to have two full-time handling the majority of everything took on the job of the second administrative assistant and then um, uh, an assistant was hired that did not have the quali same qualifications experience etc at a much lesser pay so the person who is handling the bulk of everything was handling it for two positions so she got a pay hike makes sense and thank you for doing your research, Bonnie. It sounds like this is the right number. That's cool. Well, I also want to add that next time you see the budget, this line will be broken up because, in fact, we only have one point five admin assistants here at Rochester. I discovered today that we don't have one point five. We have point five, and we have one uh, office manager. Um, and the office manager, for example is a salary position that is not under the collective bargaining agreement. I discovered that today. So I'm learning lots of things, as you are learning lots of things. So we're not talking about apples and apples, we're talking about apples and oranges. Yeah, she's a year-round. So, the, so you're, you're saying, you're saying that one of those two is one of those two employees is, not is, no, is, is, is no longer under the, the support Correct. services contract. Right. And it's she also working. works year-round. Right. Well, there's the, the, you can work year-round in the support services contract. The big thing is, is that the, the for, a lot of, for a lot of people you have to you have to pay them more because the the, the support uh, services salary the salaries you get under the support services contract are often not what you can hire someone for for a management position. There's a similar kind of thing happening in some of our districts. I don't, it's not happening this year in our district here, but in other districts in the custodial area, the maintenance area is being segregated into our head of maintenance and custodians. And head of maintenance is outside the union in a salary and has wider duties and some more administrative supervisory kind of duties. And so it's a similar kind of model of Right. They do have a food a lot of places do have a food service directors as well. They they take the, you you can't the, the you can't hire someone under the support services contract salary structure generally to do that level of management and menu planning. So you, you, you go and you hire a manager, uh, a manager instead, and they keep your so you keep your union people to just be uh, workers, worker bees. But Jen's point is still on there. It is a it is a decision of the board, the unified board, not the one point five in the salary. Correct, we've, but we've it heard, it, 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 it millions of dollars. Yeah, but it's, we, we've heard the input from one side. I just want to. I just would like to say I know, and I won't say names, but the. The person in Rochester is fabulous, and she works so hard, and she does such a great job, and um, you're really lucky to have her, um, and I think she does do a job and a half, but um, but I think our gal is really great, too, and I, um, it just seems like we've got finally got someone, and the continuity would be great, and I would really hate to lose her as well, so if there was a way, I mean, it seems like that doesn't seem like a lot for what she does. I was there last week, and she was on unclogging toilets and putting band-aids on and um, doing all sorts of tasks in like this little space of time and um, I just think she's great and I wouldn't want to lose her because she found a better job someplace else. Well, because um, I do love yours. I mean, yours is great. She's fabulous. And I think the question is 
not um, because it, for Stockbridge there is that one FTE that that, that person has a full time position still. There's not a cut or a right, reduction. She it is a, a full time. Is she, she just part to full time? She, she was working 194 days. A oh. year. She was, we extended her to 204. Oh, you did. Okay, so we've yeah. increased her. Oh, from last week. Yeah. Oh, okay. From today. <laughs> to give her to give okay. her. Okay. I'm to, so happy. Yeah. <laughs> to give I her. I said the same thing last week. <laughs> okay, Joanne, if you're happy, we're happy. <laughs> I'm happy. I'm so happy. Oh, she's happy. Imagine she's doing it. Well, she made more money. It's our day. I said, yeah. 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 you walk right into that. So she makes the same amount of money. She's working more days. So she'll make more. She'll make more. Right, so she's working more days. Okay. Right. So is this number correct? Has this been increased? Uh, David told me that <laughs> the numbers were adjusted. So, yes. Yeah. Okay. It looks the same. Yeah. It is the same. It I is. mean, 10 days isn't much, but it, it's the same. Well, it's a it couple change. thousand bucks. It should change. It, it didn't change. It did not change. So David, they're saying that that salary line for Stockbridge did not change. One, line 180. She might be insulting. Oh, no, she's going to work last the last budget. <laughs> the last budget line, um, the last budget uh, line 203, she was at a point one then as well. Right. She was just point one, point one, point one but right. she will be working more days in the calendar year. Right. Yeah, that number hasn't moved. It was 2406 when she was just the 194. And it's 24, six, I'm sorry, 24, six, six, oh, seven now. So we need to, we need to check so you're uh, saying that it's the number in one M180. So you're saying she's actually more than a point one? No, 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 no. She's, 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 she's working still more days. One, but she gets paid more. more days. She's going to work 204 days. Okay, okay it's for the same amount. Right. And it's still so, <laughs> support staff, support <laughs> staff FTEs are, 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 are kind of confusing because okay. The FTE actually means, like, are you working a full day and a full number of days during the week? But we have some support staff, like cafeteria people don't really work during the summer unless we have a summer camp program or something. So they would, they would you know, just be, in, in, the, in the support staff contract, there's school year employees, there's extended employee, extended year employees, and full year employees. So she's a full-time extended year employee now as opposed to a full-time okay. school year employee and, and the rationale was because we were going to give her a little more time before school starts and at the end after school's ended to wrap things up so that's five days on each end is what i would project it might be seven on one and three on the other i don't know but yeah i can see i would think it'd probably be more on the front end and, and, and less on the on the back but maybe but uh, I, i'm just glad we put some more time in there Yes. So I'm um, sorry, but it explains the why, like the boy's position, why, you know, if uh, for 40% show for students, we, there's 1.0 position, it explains why for 90, or like for 60%, I'm sorry, we would need 1.5. I think that mm -hmm. makes sense. That's good. Yeah, so that's what it's at now. Just the writers aren't quite right. Can we go back one to the principal salaries? Uh, sorry, 179. Yep. Is is the 87088 a placeholder for Rochester? I I haven't. We've talked about the model for next year. I want to do that in non-public with them, and then come out and tell you what what that's going to be. It's a decision if they want to go in a particular direction. But I need some time with them to talk about it, and we haven't yet. So, I mean, I've I've brushed by a couple ideas with them, but we haven't. It's going to be their decision where how they want to go, and I really, I really need some time and not probably because there are personalities involved. So, right now it's a placeholder, yes, <laughs> but I don't expect it to be that way uh, moving forward. And that does include, so Stockbridge used to have a 0.8 principal and the beginning of this year changed to a one with funding from the public of trustees. I always get the name of that wrong. But the, and this does show the full one covered by this budget. Correct. So we won't have to ask. But the numbers that are in there are not going to, if you right, guys accept change. what I'm talking about, right. you, they're not going to stay the same, right. they're going to go down. So. Right. Um, okay. Not to be mysterious, but no. The principal salary would go down. Sorry. The total would go down. Um, so uh, on to buildings and grounds. Can I go back? Oh, sorry. Go for it. Um, 
144504 program, there's no OT services listed. I think before it used to be lumped together, but I'm not sure where that seems like it's lumped together. Well, there are, there is an OT, I, I can guarantee that because my daughter works with her in Stockbridge under the 504 program. If it was not billed to 504, it, it doesn't show up as 504. So what will it show up as? So the, the, point, the point is, let me just, let me just for the benefit of the board as well as the public, the budget is not a series of envelopes. I, the way I look at the budget, it's not a series of envelopes with cash in it. A lot of people think of budget like that, but I don't think of the budget like that. And I don't administer the budget like that. And I don't believe state law requires the budget to be treated like that. Rather, the budget is a plan of action to accomplish some goals. So to answer the question about OT in specific terms, let's say, let's say that there's, there's, no, there's no need for any physical therapy. There's no reason why that money cannot be moved to cover OT. But it needs to have a pocket of money to come from. Where it, it, does, come it doesn't, from? no, it doesn't. It's not a, it's so not a set of envelopes with cash in them. That's the point. The budget is, is as a whole. The voters don't vote for every line in the budget, they vote for the total. If you look at the Ward total, Ward budget vote, it's not for the line items. Even the board doesn't vote for the line items, and certainly <coughs> the public doesn't vote for the line items. <coughs> yeah, but they vote the total the amount. They say, we're going to spend $6 million next year, $3 million, because it is. And the, and the administration says, this is how we think we're going to spend it. And the board says, well, and the voters say, well, I think that sounds reasonable. But then different students come in, different needs come in, and there's a need to yeah. change the plan to meet the circumstances that, that arise during the course of the year. And as long as, as the total amount that's been approved by the voters is is used appropriately, it doesn't mean it's exactly, it's not cash in the neighborhood. So can we add a line item for that? Sure. So, yeah, I think it's a good idea. services are under physical No. You're not. It's not there. So one of the most important things that I'm responsible for is reporting to the state accurately what we're actually doing. So if we're doing OT, then I need to report it as OT. Absolutely. Because there is OT in the state already. And the 504 program? Oh. Stockbridge, I think. That's where we are. And the 504 program. 504 So maybe it's some rough. Maybe it's a special occasion. But Stockbridge is a 504. Sorry? Stockbridge is a 504. Right. You had, in the previous budget, you had $7,000 lumped into just one line of contract services 504. And then you broke it out for this version. You broke it the same $7,000 out into uh, three lines of, of, of psych, as a, a speech and language, and, and PT. And we're just, so the, the concern is we know that there was OT. There, 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 there was OT offered, and we're making we 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 want to make sure it doesn't fall through the cracks. I'm, I'm and again, I, I understand what you're saying that if there's not a budget, if there's not an item that says OT on the budget, it, you know, we we know that doesn't mean we can't have OT. What I just want to make sure of is that wherever those whatever envelope those dollars that were paid for last year came out of whether it was just one lump line that said contract services, that we're not dropping dollars, that we're not going to find that we, 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 had, we, we really had another $2,000 of, 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 of OT somewhere that's going to, because that's in, in some ways dropping and in, in, in forgetting about those things is often how uh, deficits happen because, you know, as you, as you spoke of uh, fairly well last time, the, the, the point of like uh, private fundraised funds being, being kind of treated as an unofficial revenue source and then when those when, when they, the bake sales don't pan out that year um, and suddenly the, you know you, you're faced with either drawing down monies to, to support the services that you thought you were paying for with, with, with outside fundraising um, and, and generating a deficit or you're cutting a, you're cutting a service here the, I think it's the same logic we want to make sure that we know there were, there was OT at the school if it's tucked into psych, if you know psychological services really one thousand dollars and it was two thousand of OT and two thousand of PT and two thousand of speech, speech language whatever, I mean as long as the the, the total the, the seven grand is the accurate total and not that, that we've forgotten that, that, that we, we we've dropped OT and we're going to have a surprise in next year's uh, uh, yeah, audit. Yeah. Cool. Okay, great, thank you. Right. Well, I mean, I think it, it, I mean, it, 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 as, 
as you said, this is this is what the needs of, 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 of one or two kids or three kids or however many kids are getting 504 for services at, at, at Stockbridge, and we're trying to you know project that forward. So you know, it, it, a budget isn't you know a budget is not is also not a, a, an upper cap. It's our it's our best guess at what, you know what we think you know is a reasonable assumption our spending is going to be, and we know we can't you know we, we know we're not going to get going to get laser focus. Um, but you know, we want to make sure that, that we're, we're, we're showing what we have. We are going to go to buildings and rooms. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Wait, what happens when you don't spend all the money? So you set aside extra money for the first thing about the school, we should bring those to the bank. What happens when you don't spend that money? So money, all the money we have is in the bank. So if we, if we choose not to take money out from the bank to cover a particular kind of expense, it can either stay in the bank, in which case it goes into a surplus at the end of the year and this comes back to the taxpayers two years later, okay. or it may be that there's another need that arises that the principal says, this is the most important thing we have to do this year. This kid's coming and, and doesn't have this service and we need to provide this service. And so it could be, the budget could be uh, as a management tool, not, it's not changing what the, what is approved, the approved budget, but the, 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 the adjusted budget could be made to cover some other kind of expense, or maybe the, the boiler blew up and you've got to cover the cost of the boiler, so, or maybe some other kind of a field trip and suddenly an opportunity arises that we could go to New York to listen to the symphony orchestra, or see the mess play, or Yes. So that's good. Yes. So that's a really good thing. And then this difference in what we're spending versus what we've been allocated to spend, what is that difference? How much, is, how much money is that? You know what I'm asking? I, I do. So yeah. I'm to ask. So what is the difference there? And I thought of getting the answer to that question, but I didn't have the time to do it. Oh. But I will bring it to the next meeting. Well, are you referring to how much between the 5% allowable before our tax rate goes up? I was I wondering that too. Yeah. And also, what is that actually money that's available? the community. How much other people's money can we spend before we have to spend our money? <laughs> 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 All right, buildings and grounds. Buildings and grounds. Oh, are we there? I have a question there. Oh. See that it's like fuel and electricity is bumped into these large numbers for Rochester. Do we know what each building is actually? What is the expense of each building? Did you get the PLOOF report as far I, as heat? I do have the PLOOF report. It doesn't answer this question. It didn't break down what are the expenses. Um, we do have separate meters for each building. So at the business office, we could check the electricity bills. That we could find out. Um, I don't believe. Should we only have the elementary school building on here? No, you, the, the district is going to own all of Rochester's property. We were told that we weren't going to have to pay for the high school and junior high school when we own the buildings. No, that was... Have been stated you get the lump sum, and if you decide to discard part of it, if the town, if it goes back to the town or whatever, that's a whole different question. And it's a moot point right now because we're on the budget. I mean, we're good. We're good for the money. Yeah, oh. the buildings and grounds budget... What is that based on? Uh, is that assuming um, that we are operating both buildings as we are right now, or is it based on operating the elementary as part of the high school, or what's the breakdown for the, the numbers? These numbers right here that we're looking at here makes the assumption that I wanted to put a worst case scenario so that we could change it downward. This assumes both buildings are operating. Um, we obviously will not need the full high school building. We also, without limiting, without backing down on opportunities for kids in the Rochester side of our district, cannot all fit into the elementary building. In fact, physically, we cannot all fit into the elementary building. Well, I think building. that's a discussion after the okay. budget. But I just, yeah. that's the best way I know how to answer this. So this so number, discussion. theoretically, we should be able to take down. It's just a matter of how much. So we could move using this number. It's not going to be any higher than this number if we say had all the elementary kids in here and operated the, you know, gym and food service.
program out of the elementary, it's still going to come under this number. The way I would answer that is that barring any unseen huge spikes in the cost of fuel oil, propane, electricity, um, this should be a worst case scenario, regardless of how we use the two buildings. This should be sufficient to cover any use that the board ultimately um, well, it's $6,000 more than the Stockbridge one. I'm still thinking I in hope it's going to be more than that. The board hasn't wrapped their head around exactly what they want to do. They've had a, a request, but they don't, they haven't really debated that amongst themselves. They really haven't had time to talk about it. Um, and that's one of those unfinished things that well, we... Well, this is what PLUF was all about, was at least going to tell us about zones. Right. And they did tell you about zones. Right. So what can we break apart in this building? Do you want to do it now, or do you want to I go think, through the budget and go back to it? Because it's a fair amount of information I can give you. But I think it totally relates to this. These well, items. I don't know. I, again, I the budget. With, this budget comes in... It is only going to get better. It only, and we already, we already uh, don't. But there's serious, there's serious questions about the intent. Of what Can we, we have. finish the budget? It seems like that's a whole separate discussion. I think we're almost towards the end. Yeah. Can we certainly go back up? So buildings and grounds, we we are we 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 are looking at a worst case scenario. Is basically where, where we're at on that in the budget. 244, the field trip, Bruce, I don't know if you could comment on what um, what's included. That number was zero the last time, I believe. Yes, yeah, the trips, transport. 244, you said? The right. Well, I, I basically, um, there was a high number on the Rochester side and nothing on the Stockbridge side. But obviously, Stockbridge is taking field trips. And we, they need to be supported for being able to do that. So um, we don't have a number for it. We don't have a number. There's a number there now. No, I know, but I'm saying for what they were spending, we don't have a number. Well, part of this is confused about the the number back on the first page that it says transportation. Uh, what is? It? Oh, we we took we took some of the number off that. Um, field trips on line 42 and we tried to bring it into the line because the line that's uh, field trips 244 is um, the two the going and coming <laughs> to that so it's it's a little different the other one would be fees and things like entrance fees for field trips and things like that like Kiwi uh, and in previous budgets was field trips had transportation Combined. It was probably put into one category so, and it all came out of that. So David, what David's trying to do is rearrange this into categories that that are right. Um, right, David? I'm, I don't know. So you can see the formula here for the, the transportation. It's 1,800 plus 400 plus 500. 400 more is the estimate of what the cost of the cabin. 500 was the cost of the estimate of the transportation cost on each of those. So you just took a number and put it in there from that. We, we, yeah, we were trying to sort those two columns. To well, I believe that PTO usually pays for the field trip. Though. Yeah, and we will say PTO pays. Yeah, so no, I think that was it. Want to take it out? No. no. Too many conversations. I'd like to speak to the, the field trips and the PTO paying for it. We discussed in our educational committee about bringing the funds that the PTO has been raising into the budget to lessen the pressure on the PTOs. I think that's what we discussed um, because it needs to be something that we can be consistent with every year. Same with like, the winter wellness program, just to know that those funds are there for our kids every single year in both of our communities. So it's been a discussion to bring the, the fundraising portion into our budget for us to share. And, and no deference to the PTO. I mean, everybody's absolutely grateful for what's I mean, been done. It was just to be consistent in the future. Yeah, and now that gets to the remedial construction programs we have in the budget. That if, if, we, if we took it out of the budget, because we say, well, the, the federal grant will cover it, we don't see what the cost is. And if things change on the funding source, we still have the expense, or we have decided we're not going to have that money anymore. So the, the general 
idea of this best month and then things out. We're doing accounting for, it's only a state that expects everyone not to net out a cost of things. So we don't have to do what the federal government does. It's have well, it's all fine and good until we go over the 5% and then we all have to pay for it again. Yeah. Yeah. 5% this year and 5% next year and 5% the next year. Yeah. 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 The taxes are going to start going up if you're taking all this money and moving it around really young. Well, the, the in previous meetings, we've had such a cry for equity, fair share, you know, and that kind of thing. So we're trying, we're trying to make that happen. Uh, and and also, you have your fuel bill sixty thousand dollars. You're crying equity. We haven't. I didn't pad that number. That's it's just a real number. Sixty thousand dollars more. Well, but it's the idea that we're putting the number in without actually. Well, we're not supposed to be well, using current usage. Well, the, that was negotiated in the original agreement. I, mean, I know you, if you attended meetings, that you, that, we, that, that those expenses were put into the agreement when we voted on it. So just let me clarify for field trips. Um, I, I guess I just want to say this again. Okay. In terms of the Hulbert Outdoor Center, the Montshire Museum, which is where first grades, a lot of first grade teachers like to go, Park Safari, which is I think probably the closest zoo perhaps that youngsters access, um, the Boston Science Museum. If the teachers from both schools want to take those trips and come together, uh, neither school is going to fill up a bus. So the money that I put in on the Rochester column for those particular trips I just mentioned is also going to cover the bigger, the largest part of the expense for Stockbridge because it's the bus and the driver. So I'm comfortable that unless there's a lot of other field trips that teachers have never mentioned to either myself or Bruce, there's adequate money in there for both schools to do everything that we've talked about. The exception is the winter wellness. And I think, assuming it might be um, Riker and, um, what's the other one, Riker and what's the downhill? Snowboard. Assuming it might be that, I think 22, maybe $2,300 would, would, cause ours is almost 19, would easily cover winter wellness, driver and mileage for Stockbridge. Right. And then I think we have the field trips well covered. Um, unless there's something major that someone's thinking about doing, they haven't told us. Right. I think we can we can uh, I think that's we, safe we can look at what we paid this year for for winter wellness and just make sure that gets added in. And that's what I did, Carl, when I did these when I did these. Right numbers. for Rochester, so we just need to do that. We just need to get that number for Stockbridge. Exactly. So for 244, the transport field trip. I know the the breakdown doesn't matter, but when we present it to the public, I think it does matter for this year. Uh, so I was wondering if we could. If that twelve thousand is a good number, if we it seems like sixty forty is the, the magic it's number great, here. I think that's a good split it's, that sixty forty. Right. So because the goal is also to get our kids together. That's right. That's Absolutely. right. The and there's purpose. gonna be savings on the buses by yep. going together. Sure. As well. So if we could right. do that. The, 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 uh, uh, it's six two forty on four forty four. Two forty four, right. sixty forty. Six two forty right. split on two forty four. And can we also again when we see this budget again next week, can we have some some sort of uh, 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 budget uh, uh, entry for the cost of whatever programming the educational committee and the staff and, and the administration thinks is going to happen. We, we we say all along, oh, you know, we'll bring kids to yeah, to, to Stockbridge to do this. We'll bring kids to Rochester to do that. Right. Something you know, we we've got to have a, a, an entry for that. So we need to you know. Get ahead. So that's an estimate of how many trips we might take yeah. right. between, no, between between the two places. You know how many times that how many times kids from Stockbridge are going to need to be bused to Rochester. How many kids, times kids from Rochester are going to need to be bused to Stockbridge? I figure if it's a performance. That from um, the educational committee, uh, from what I got from Donna and um, Rochester staff last week was that it was regularly, hopefully, be monthly or bimonthly. Right. With um, so let's, 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 let's so let's try to, but if you're doing if you're doing a performance as we've talked yes. about, uh, it's going to be five or easily five for round trips a week, you know, because the final for that, week for that, before the final. That, for that. So we just need to. Right. I'm just saying, you know, that. and if you do two of those, or there's a science fair or something like that, and we take it, we talk about Olympics and things like that. We're talking the week of. So, since we don't know what that number is, yeah, no, give me a number. <laughs> Um, how much does it cost? Yeah, how much does it cost to run a bus between? Not, the not a, I don't mean a figure, but well, how many trips? How many trips? trips? I don't mean a, a money number. How about many trips? In a, what's the school year? How many days in a school year? 100, 180. Would you say 30? 30 trips. 
30 trips back trips. and forth? I, I'm, I don't know. I don't even know how to guess it. Well, that's yep, it. Yep. I'm just saying he yep. wants a number, so we're trying to if get him a number. one a month, that's 10. Say you add five for performance, five for field days, that's 20. 20. So 20. 20. 20 days? 20. 20. 20. Yeah, 20, and 20 back and forth. The, these are the figures you can use. I'll get a good number. It's 95 cents a mile, and it's 19.25 an hour for the driver. What is it for the right now? 1925 is this year's thing. Where we've been comfortable talking about how often we want to get our kids together. Weekly. It won't be weekly. That's not our uh, still. We're just, we're just, we're just taking, we're, you know, these are all steps that we're starting with, you know, to see what, what we can do together. What are the exciting programs and that we can come I, up with? I think the other thing we have to do is we have to give teachers additional time like we had last week to get together. Certainly yeah. this sense of collaboration is what we want and it's value, but we can't we can't force it on teachers in either school unless it fits their instructional needs because there is so much they're already trying to do in a day and a week. Right. And, sure. and we have to make sure that these these opportunities to come together assist with their instruction, not come on top of what we're already asking. Sure, and, the, and, the, and I'm sure they'll come up. They're with great appropriate ideas. and they're authentic we and they, they're they're valuable. Time. We just need to give them time to generate what those experiences. Sure, are but we, we we what we need to do today is we need to say about how many times would they do I that. Twenty is a good number. So days. we can we can uh, put in a, a, a figure so we can get the bus from place to place. So Megan and Ethan and Janie and some teachers have been involved with the Educational Steering Committee and I was wondering, um, you know, we, both towns have done the surveys and, you know, we're all about STEM and all that kind of stuff and um, the performances. Um, so I don't, you know, it'd be great. It's nice to be all enthusiastic about those, but it doesn't seem like there's money in the budget for that. Well, and I'm wondering if we can have a, a line item for special programs and then it could be a lot of as needed throughout the year. Because it'd be a shame if we're all excited yeah, to do that. Yeah, we don't have any money. Which is why we're trying to guesstimate the days. That but I mean, that would be in addition to the transportation yeah. supplies for STEM or so artists and residents. I mean, I've been Unless you want to provide your time for free. You're a book thing. It's kind of great. Well, it is. I mean, it is something brought it up, too, is that, um, you know, I've been in this part of this for a little while, but, you know, there is no there's no drama, there's no artist in residence. I'd like to recommend too, maybe looking at the first few times we bring our kids together to really make it a team building activity because I've noticed that kids in Rochester and kids in Stockbridge um, do not, they do not want to go outside of their little social circles. Uh, and you know, I remember Jordan telling me last year, he's the site coordinator, he was the site coordinator in, um, one planet is like every time we have a combined field trip the Stockbridge kids are like no I don't want to go with Rochester or no I don't want to go with Bethel Rochester kids do the same thing you bring them together and you know on a field trip situation they don't mix summer camp when they're together for four weeks and they're doing a lot of team building stuff that's when good stuff can happen and it really helps them break down their barriers and um, yeah, I mean, I think we, it, uh, it's unfortunate. I don't think it's a healthy thing that our kids are so, um, what yeah. Is, one example of a success was this yeah. wonderful, uh, I think it was fairly prompt, it was just sledding, pre yeah. 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 sledding. Well, and those younger kids are. Well, exactly. Yeah. But I do think that is also why we want those 20 trips in there. Yeah. It's because that's the kind of thing where it's like, what a great idea. Yeah. So glad we had the money to get those kids over there. And they had a blast, and they were talking to new friends and all that kind of thing. And that's where we start. If we're taking the long game of this, of bringing the supervisor these two campuses together, yeah. right. those are the kids who are going to be living. And I think it also depends on the summer programs. I know my kids do summer programs in Rochester and in Stockbridge and in Bethel. And they have friends in all, all three places. Yeah. That's yeah, great. And they, yeah. their social group, they, they go. I think it's want. that one time, like like I said, during the summer, the kids, after the first day or two, are like, they're bonded. But yeah. we do a lot of field trips during the summer, or during the school year, and it's like, they come together for a field trip, and they're definitely separate, and then they don't see each other for three months, and they come back, and they're separate. And so I think it's great if we have 20 days in the calendar that we can get kids together and make it a regular thing. My kids still see kids from Rochester, and they still remember their names. And I'm like, those kids? Not? I don't remember. But they still remember all of their friends from, so last from Rochester. Night, uh, I was in, in 
Chelsea and, and Tunbridge, and we were doing basically the same thing, putting a budget together, trying to figure out all the things we need. And it occur occurred to me that one thing that might be very, very helpful uh, is if both campuses could invest in an interactive television so that we could instruct from one place and the kids could be involved in bo on both campuses without having to move anywhere. Can you do that with FaceTime and Skype? You can, but a projection screen is what I'm talking about so that the kids can don't have to be in their little screen so that they can be up and, I mean, you can't let kids go into a room and be unattended. There'd have to be somebody with them, but there could be co-instruction. You could use it to do uh, field trips uh, without having to leave the room, the Louvre Museum and, you know, different places. It would really help, I think, to unite us around instruction without the kids having to, to actually to the to the campus. I think they'd really love it if you put it up at recess. I can they were like an indoor I recess in the gym. Well, the well no, I mean, <laughs> what, what I'm serious, I'm really serious about. Yeah, no, no. And I suggest that we think. I think uh, it's a really great. I said the same thing to Tucker and Chelsea. Great. Can we have Can we have a good proposal for uh, next yeah. week's budget? That'd yeah. be awesome. I think that's really good. Uh, that's such a good idea because our kids are limited in their experience. I don't think we're talking about a lot of money. We're not talking about a lot of money. Uh, <laughs> well, I know that, but I'm not talking about a TV. I'm talking about a projection screen, and they're really not. We've got one at the central office, and we use it when people don't want to drive to a meeting. They just uh, come in on the uh, go to meeting type of thing, and they're there, and they can see us. We can see them. You can put. You can put up. Um, directions on the screen, uh, you know, if you if a teacher's trying to teach or whatever. I mean, it doesn't replace being in the room with a teacher, but it's pretty close. Sure. And, and we wouldn't have to bust them, so. I, uh, I haven't heard anything mentioned about sports, but um, I think this is one of the best bonding experiences uh, since uh, Rochester and Bethel did the call five years ago. And myself was one of the first kids who started playing soccer with Bethel. And then it moved on to basketball and baseball. Those kids, and I don't know, because I moved to Rochester, I only heard about like, oh, Bethel and Rochester, like two of them are so competitive. It's like, I don't know why or what the source, uh, what was it, you know, based on like, uh, how it started, but. I just saw my son just like love playing with the uh, with battle teams, and 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 it was just like many kids. They just interacted so well, and they get to know they got to know each other, so they date each other. Like I mean, so like uh, so you, are you related. suggesting that we try and find ways that they can play? So like sports, like soccer, I think this like is soccer we have because the soccer program in. we have is totally after school independent. It's a tri town. It's a, a tri town. It's not school funded. Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. And maybe we're talking, which of course also starts bumping up our trips. If we start putting soccer together, we do have really nice fields. They have very nice fields. I think another thing we have to think about that will start emerging is so far we've talked almost exclusively about um, youngsters getting together to do different activities, do different trips. The other wonderful thing that becomes Teachers. possible is if we have a teacher in Rochester and a teacher in Stockbridge who have a specialty area, something they are really good at and love to teach, there's no reason they can't for five or six weeks, if, if it's their choice, to go to the other school and be a guest teacher. It's like it's like mini Fulbrights. You, you put an application together and you go down to Stockbridge and you do your thing. Or you come up to Rochester and you do your thing. There's so many ways that we can collaborate once we get this first kind of swath under yeah, our belt. I hope that <laughs> that bus number, I think, is actually really, really important. So, um, who is doing for the Yeah, I know. We got to go. Who's in charge of curriculum? The SU or in? This school board here. The SU has a person and a half that provide that for the whole SU. I don't know what, whether you're asking more specifically to Rochester itself. Well, particularly uh, for Rochester Stockbridge. I mean, isn't there a whole new curriculum proposal to help with the merge and to utilize
utilize the two campuses and to really think about the benefits of bringing this, these two uh, groups together so that, you know, you Well, of course, a lot of that, too, is the leadership that's found at Stockbridge, as you talked about when the leader, you know, how we figure out that, what the principal setup is. Is that Yeah, kind of but, but basically what, what these folks have been doing is going out and looking at models. Um, Who are these folks, sorry? The staff here and the staff at Stockbridge. Mm -hmm. uh, we've, we've talked to them about some possibilities. Um, and here it's, uh, it's a move to go to multi-age, uh, which is having uh, two grades in one, uh, you know, be instructed, instructed that way. Uh, we've talked to them about uh, what Williamstown and uh, Orange and Washington are doing right now, and that is having content specialists do the instruction. So one person who's really passionate about math will be working in several grades teaching math because they're really, really good at it and love it, and, and somebody else would do the, the literacy and, and uh, social studies, humanities, and, uh, and maybe somebody else in science. So that's some of the things that we've talked to them about, and, and my conversation with Donna Gallant was because they had just gone out and looked at some programs, uh, and they were excited about maybe doing that. Um, so, you know, we are um, talking uh, about various ideas. Um, and you must have the community engagement plan for all the programming um, yet? I can't, I can't speak to that, but maybe somebody else here can. Well, it's a, it's a statewide organization that um, trains teachers to go in and do very specific, you know, segments related to the arts to help coordinate with teachers on certain programming. It could be a really excellent way to think about, you know, merging around, you know, particular concepts um, and also very specifically about this merge, you know, doing it successfully um, through very creative measures. And they have an extreme, I mean, it's a huge resource. You should really look it up. Community oh, Engagement Lab. It What's it called? It's called the Community Engagement Lab. And the people that are involved in it, one of them actually is I mean, two, the two experts that are connected to it have, you know, national uh, <coughs> tendrils. One of them is very connected to the Lincoln Center, and the other one is, you know, sort of one of the, the leaders in education, arts education in the country. But they're based in Vermont, and they have a STEM program, and they've worked in Randolph and Windsor, and it's a, it would be worthwhile looking at it. Where are they based out of? In Montpelier. Yeah. So. Jenny had the suggestion that we add a special programs line. I think we should. I think the other thing, if we, if we could make it broad enough, um, Faye just passed me something today. There, there are grants out there. Uh, it's something like for $200, if we could put $200 in upfront money, you can get $1,000 worth of STEM equipment. So if we could, in that line item, include some seed money for things when you well, see things like that. Too. It's, it's yeah. the same thing for um, when they got uh, 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 circus circus. It was like a two, couple hundred bucks, I think, for the school. They had a grant that had a grant covered the rest of it, and they could come in, and that would be really fun. So, since this is a guess, uh, what do you want to put in it? What kind of money? Twenty-five. Five. Uh, yeah, Thank you. Five. Well, well, we are watching. Right? Right? We spend really nearly. Find out what it might Well, what was the thing? You know, but we've got so many other big things to talk about. Yeah. Five. Five. Five for both. Five for a total. Yeah. Five for total. SU. Five for total. Sixty forty. But no, we're going to spend it together. Five in there. We'll just five. Yeah. Yeah. Five. Five. Thanks. You hear that, David? Special projects line for five thousand dollars. This is like the price is right. <laughs> So I think, we, don't, I think we, can, we can say that, so the things that I heard us uh, 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 come up with that we haven't had answers on, we need to check the small schools grant amount for Rochester, mm -hmm. we need to add the winter wellness program for Stockbridge, we need to add 20 days of transport, inter-campus transport, we need to add uh, uh, Bruce's uh, interactive gear 
um, uh, item or, or put that together. Um, and then add a special projects line for 5,000. So those are the things we're going we're gonna, uh, to be looking at. Also now. a line for OT. Yeah. And then, yes, yeah. 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 a line for OT. Salary equivalent. Right, and right. we need to correct the salary. Yeah. And our math shoots at one point. But the salary is not We need 24 salary. It was a 24 7, 6, 7, 7. We didn't, we didn't, uh, the 10 extra days weren't added to the state, the administrative assistant in right. Stockbridge. The music we don't believe the music salary, the music salary in Stockbridge is correct. Correct. And we were going to look at uh, the, the counselor in Stockbridge and whether or not there was capacity to, to give her more time there and eliminate the SAP, uh, the $7,800 in SAP for Stockbridge. I'll be good to go. So, oh. all right. One more question. Oh. Just one thing. Yeah. Um, on line 264, the tech tuition that's paid on behalf of the state, um, how come that's added in if it's paid for? Because it's also added on the revenue page. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's, it's, a, it's a wash. Basically, the state gives this money, and the state takes that money back. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it, it comes under our budget. It sounds like the way they do business. Oh, I see. <laughs> Yeah, they just want to show us that they gave us. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Carl, I'm not sure if you looked on the list. Um, so 262, grade 7 through 12. Right now there's a Stockbridge person that goes to Woodstock. I'm assuming that that individual's parents pay for them, but they'll need to be on the list next year. It didn't look like he was on the list to me. I don't know if you... I'll take a, I'll take a look at that. I think I know what you're talking about. I am who it is. <laughs> I know who it is, I just don't want to say that. Please don't okay. say it. No, I was going to say, I just, I, I was like, I think he's going to, is he supposed to He'll be in seventh grade next year. Okay. Right, so he'll move yeah, to the, so he he'll move to the, to, to the list. All right. Um, so, the buildings. You're going to talk to us about the proof report. You're going to talk to us about, did you find the stuff in Barb's file? About uh, the uh, building in Stockbridge, the module? No. no okay. I, I, didn't, I didn't do anything with that. Okay. Um, you did yes. give me a ballpark number when we talked about it on the Facebook page. Okay. Yeah. 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 shutting down completely either building. And here's and, and sort of here's why. 
um, the high school building, and I passed out a map to everyone, um, and they're, they're going around for the for folks visiting. The high school basically has three zones, three heating zones. This commons area that we're sitting in is the largest, it's, it's one heating zone. Then the second heating zone goes from the shop up through to the mechanical room there at the top of that little ramp. And then the third heating zone encompasses the auditorium, the music room, uh, the family and consumer science room, and um, out into the, to the front lobby area. Um, upstairs here, overhead in the mezzanine, we have a water-charged uh, sprinkler system. He doesn't recommend that we drain that sprinkler system. And he also added that um, he's not certain that fire code in a public building would allow us to drain that sprinkler system. He also raised the issue that if it was decided to drain the sprinkler system, we should contact our insurance company because there are insurability issues if you disconnect any sort of safety system. So he just he just brought up those two things. Uh, just to clarify, the w water charge sprinkler system is only in zone one? It's only upstairs in the mezzanine. It's not even right here. It's upstairs in the mezzanine over zone one. But yes. it's over zone one? Yes, it's over zone okay. one. What he recommends instead is if we're not using this section of, of this building, is that we shut the temperature down to 55. Um, he wants to see what's involved with draining the domestic water. So many of the classrooms have sinks in them. He wants to look at what's involved in draining those systems. Um, shutting the temperature down to 50 to 55, and then inspecting closely and often. And the reality is that the environment in Vermont doesn't allow us to close a building and walk away without creating huge problems for ourselves. Um, one of the other reasons he doesn't recommend um, discharging the sprinkler system upstairs is the volume of material that's up there. There's a lot of records up there. We really have to get it sorting that out at some point. But right now, there's a lot of just uh, paper stuff and things up there. Um, the elementary building is essentially one zone. Um, the area back by the um, preschool room, he, he said something about circulator pumps and da-da-da, and I don't, obviously I'm not a plumber, so I didn't get it all, but um, he basically said it's like a little mini zone, but it's not independent. It can't operate on its own. So basically he considers the elementary building, <coughs> excuse me, to be one zone. Um, to shut down and th the classroom part of that building, um, he would essentially do the same thing. He would bring in whatever equipment he needs, drain the domestic water, to, so the, the fountains and things like that to the classroom, blow out the pipes, put the temperature down. But again, he said we have to monitor it closely, um, you have to inspect it frequently, and there will be issues um, that will crop up just because the environment in Vermont doesn't, doesn't really let you walk away from the building. Um, the new addition, or the new addition, the addition at the end of the elementary building, um, that has radiant heat in the floor. And one of his little concerns about that is, is he's, uh, one of the things he's going to check into when he comes back is over the vacation week is to look at as to whether or not glycol was added to that system. If you add glycol to a system, it has to be maintained. <coughs> Now, Jesse Potter's been here four years. We've never done any maintenance on it. We, it just hasn't happened. One of the situations is if you don't maintain a glycol system, it begins to eat away all the seals and everything in your equipment. We have begun to experience some leaking here and there. And so one of the things he's gonna do when he comes back over vacation is to um, probably pull the glycol out of that system and, and inject new glycol into the system because you can't let it sit there. If it's doing what he's fearful it's doing, it's just going to continue to erode and, and cause difficulties. But he has a way to test. He does have a way to if, test if there's glycol in the system. First, yeah. Okay. Yes, he does. So um, basically his assessment from that visit is that um, it's not going to be as simple as maybe folks have been thinking it was to leave a section of either of these buildings. Um, it is possible to shut the temperatures down to drain the water from the you know, classroom systems, drinking fountains, et cetera. But again, they have to be monitored closely <coughs> and um, inspected frequently. I will certainly know more after his, um, uh, after
after he comes back over vacation, there is some routine work he has to do, um, but mostly he's going to be looking at um, sort of delving into the details. So if the board comes back and says, this is the section we're not going to be occupying next year, what's the very best you can do with it in terms of uh, lowering our cost for maintaining it? I did tell him, I did at one point speak for the board, I said, I don't believe the board is interested in doing anything that puts either of the buildings at risk of having bigger problems, like everything freezes up and pipes burst and ceiling issues and all that, right. because that's just, so that's that's just silly for us to do that. Yeah. So which, that's building, which building is, neither I'm sure is efficient in terms of this, but which building would be less Take up less electricity, and he, is it is it is it cheaper to heat the elementary and keep this at 55? The problem is you need both buildings, a little bit of each of the buildings, in order to be able to service the kids. Uh, cafeteria and gym, or the uh, kitchen and the gym over there. If you're going to use this building, the auditorium, and maybe a couple of the classroom, like the art room. In this building, if you're going to be over there, so his his sort of guess was, uh, Jamie, and that's part of what he wants to look into. His guess was obviously here because it's more square footage. It's it's this is more expensive. This this would probably be we probably save more money by shutting the temperatures down here um, than we would doing it anywhere else. But again, he, you know, he needs to look into a little more of that when he comes over the over the day over the break. He did say that any of the zones, um, we could deal with shutting down any of the zones. So we could shut this down, keep one and two. We could shut, keep shut one and two down. Keep this, shut the you know the wing of the wing of the elementary building where the classrooms are simply by lowering the temperatures in there. Right. Long term, the board needs to think about a plan for replacing our control systems in both buildings because right now we're not able to take very much advantage of any energy conservation because we don't have the appropriate controls to do that. But we can't fit all the elementary uh, uh, students in that building. Right now we have fifth graders here mm -hmm. and if we also need we also need five and five and six, right? Yeah. Well sixth grade so, will go on to, to sixth grade will go on to middle school. We have to get no, the present no, fifth. No, 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 sixth grade will be here no, still. Seven. Yeah. So, oh seven, sorry, seven. Yeah. Sorry. So uh, so they will no, the elementary, um, the elementary population, the classroom population, could fit yeah, into the elementary we building. Need to, we need to. Where we come up short is trying to fit art, music, One Planet, um, those programs that are in this building. The Rochester Elementary School is slightly twice as large as the Stockbridge Elementary School, and it seems like there's some rooms in the Rochester that can be reconfigured to be more equitable to what Stockbridge has. I know we talked about a potential modular unit at Stockbridge right. and raising the bar, but right now the bar for Stockbridge is far lower than the bar for Rochester. Yeah. There needs to be, somebody needs to look at what can creatively happen in the Rochester Elementary before we just say, oh, we, we can't fit. Well, you also have fewer students. Oh, right, there's two more, Rochester will need two more classrooms. They have the classroom space, but there's the other space um, I don't know how familiar you are with Stockbridge, but a lot of things in Stockbridge happen in the multi-purpose room. The OTPT happens in the hallway. There's some reconfiguration that yeah, needs to be looked at. And Bruce does not have Bruce does not have the numbers on uh, on, on a modular classroom or uh, what the what the ultimate cost of that would be when you when you bond it out. Guys, you know, I really, I really, loan I'm gonna, I really thought about this really, really, really a lot because Bonnie made um, a point of raising the bar for everyone, not lowering it. Mm -hmm. um, but after speaking to a lot of community members and, and thinking about it a lot, I really think that both communities have gone through a lot. You guys are losing your middle school and your high school. We're merging, and all, we haven't had a principal since February. To make any more changes, I really think we can configure the elementary school. I'm not saying forever, but I'm saying we're just doing this merger. There are so many changes going on, 
at least for this next year. Stockbridge people were promised, guys, that's why we came on, is that the high school was going to close. And now to turn around well, and say, no, we're not doing, and I'm not saying that we don't do that at some point. It's not a question of if, it's a question of when. And right now, I really think to bring the communities together, that we really need to kind of stick to what we said. Which, I mean, the elementary school is twice the size. You have twice the kids, it's twice the size. It seems to me that somehow we could be able to figure out how to make that work. May I offer something? In relation to the point that um, it has been raised by different people It is the first year, and I think that if you were to think about the curriculum first, um, before you start shutting certain things, certain opportunities off, it would be a really good thing. You might find that, in fact, the auditorium is extremely functional and critical to the advancement of a really uh, much better curriculum for you all. I mean, that provides an incredible opportunity for speech writing, for presentations, for theater, for lectures, for all kinds of things that you know no, you won't, you don't have right now. But that's one of the incredible benefits that could be shared. Likewise, the music room could be one of those occasions where you are coming over. We have special dedicated spaces here. I'm not advocating for one thing or another. I'm just saying that actually, I think the most important thing is curriculum first to get you really what you want, which is something that is really elevated, that speaks to the strengths of having a really, you know, a hugely increased student body where everybody can benefit from, you know, these relationships that are, that should be the first thing. I think, I think you're right. Relationships. I agree, and I think we all said that the auditorium would be used for certain things. I mean, we want drama, we want plays and things like that. Curriculum can exist anywhere, and it can exist, uh, you know, where where the passion is and where you find a space to do it. That can be curriculum. I've seen it done all over. And again, I'm not saying that it's a question of if. I'm saying when. And I think you're going. The practical matter, the reality is, Stockbridge is going to push back because it's not what what was said to begin with. And again, I think once there's more trust, once we're together, once we go over that bridge, yeah, there's a lot more possibilities. But in the beginning, I think it's a bad way to start a relationship. Well, Jane, I think for all the reasons well, that you've hands, hands, hands up. I think we need to start calling on people just to make sure we're going to start over here. I was at a lot of the merger meetings, and I think one of the attractive parts of Rochester's um, contribution to this relationship was parts of our campus um, and so we want to share that and rather than I mean we want to we want to cut space I, I agree my children are in the elementary school but we don't need this section of the building but if I don't want to cut things from Rochester kids I'd rather add things for Stockbridge community things that we don't have here that we can take advantage of in Stockbridge, awesome things like, I mean, we've, we've thrown out some ideas already, but you know, maybe that being the farm to table base for the programs, maybe it being the tech center, all of our laptops, computers go down, maybe it's the media center where the kids have their own YouTube channel and they're doing weather forecasts and product reviews. I mean, that's what they're doing these days. So maybe Stockbridge is the STEM center and just zone three, and two is the sort of arts campus and the kids can take advantage of both campuses so rather than cut things that are good for kids because at the merger meetings i think one of the things was lowering the tax rate and what's going to benefit the kids so let's add to stockbridge's campus so both campuses are equally awesome and that's and, and i think we can build on that we apparently are under budget 
there's ways we can do one-time expenses to start these things in both areas. And I think that's a conversation that we need to keep going, put the funds for. Let's not, let's not cut to go down. Let's bring the other side up. Because then next year, when this is all one budget and there's no Rochester and Stockbridge side anymore, it's one, we know what programs and we're all sharing them. That's to be, to to be fair, the Stockbridge is. board last year uh, was looking at proposals from uh, 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 the principal about uh, expanding space. And there had been, uh, uh, there had been some work she had done in terms of, uh, we had suggested that she not look at uh, permanent construction because we didn't have, you know, we, we didn't have a, a clear enough vision, we thought, for that. But there, there had been some work on, on looking at a, uh, 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 putting a modular classroom uh, outside. At the time, the thought had been that that would be a preschool building, which made it more expensive because of the the, the facilities and the, the, the bathrooms and the things that, that, that the preschool kids are required by law to have in their, in their space. Um, I was hoping that we would have uh, uh, had some, some information on that, but putting in some sort of, uh, uh, some sort of space for specials, for a maker space, for an art room or something, something like that, because you know, again, there 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 are there already was uh, uh, the, the stock report was already feeling that that building was, right. was was somewhat cramped for all the programming we were yeah. trying to do. Greenhouses, yurts. There's other ways to expand it. Um, I just wanted to mention I live in Stockbridge. I'm the delinquent tax collector in our town, and we do have quite an elderly population. So when I come to this. My kids went to Stockbridge, and then they, they came here for high school, and I think this merger is a good thing, but I also feel let's get through this first year and get some of these great ideas going, but also we have to look at numbers too, and when we have some firm numbers on the, on the kids, how many kids we're going to have in Stockbridge, how many kids in Rochester, and how we can bring them all together. Um, there's a great gym here that so much can be done in if, you know, as far as utilizing the, the uh, Rochester Grammar School. And I'm just kind of paying attention too because we do have quite a <coughs> elderly population in Stockbridge and a lot of people on fixed incomes. And people, um, many of them aren't, you know, they're, they're trusting our board and trusting people who are coming here to talk about money and how it's going to be spent and I just really want to make sure that we're fiscally responsible and get through the first year and see how things go and hopefully we can expand and make some changes. Um, that'll be good for everybody. Um, can we get um, the company Plouf? Plouf. Um, can we get an itemized cost for opening and closing each different section of the building? and possibly think about it like, hey, we're going to close the building for these two months, but then we're going to open the auditorium section because we're going to throw a joint holiday you know, concert or something together. You know, We're going to open this section for these two months and like what it would cost to open and close at will. So that we're not cutting, slashing for the whole, like, goodbye for the whole year, forget about it, but we're saying we're going to be super strategic. How much is it going to cost to open and close different sections of the building at a time for these things that we've decided we want to do? This is what the curriculum draws us to do. This is what the kids and the community wants us to do. We see we can utilize this space for one month to accomplish this goal. What's it going to cost us to open and close it for that duration of time? I think, I think that would be really valuable. I can certainly get that information. What I'm guessing is it's going to be cost prohibitive because both of the buildings, when he talked about closing them down, involved bringing in equipment to blow out the lines, drain the lines. And my guess is it's probably going to be cost prohibitive to do that for a month or two months or a sort of shorter timeline. But I certainly can ask him that. Can you ask him exactly why we're draining, draining lines for 55 degree weather, too? Can you up? I just, I, 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 I'm, I just, I'm confused as to when you say we're taking the temperature down to 55, and it seems like that's one step, and then the other step involves like draining a line and, and really winterizing a building like it was a, like it was a deer camp or something. Well, one of the one of the things that he explained it to me is we will we will have some uh, water pipes near outside walls. So if you take it down to 50 or 55, 
there's still the chance that those pipes are going to freeze when it's 15 below because they're on an outside wall, they're near a window, they're at a drafty spot, whatever, which is why he said we have to be monitoring and, and looking at the building very, very carefully. So I think mean, it's a tremendously complicated question, and I feel like we have heard a couple of options. One option is basically leave everything alone, move all the kids in here, keep paying for the heat. That's one option. Uh, another option is to have is to do the kind of thing uh, that you were talking about, but but uh, all of these are very complicated, and um, we have a tremendous resource here. But also, with, I don't blame Stockbridge for looking at that fuel bill and going crazy. I don't blame them. We have an eth Rochester has an ethical responsibility to see how that number can be reduced, Thank but you can't do it in a, in a week. You need engineering information. You need options. Maybe you can come in here. Maybe if you start changing the plumbing and changing the the uh, sensors and stuff, you can improve. We don't know. We don't know. So I think there ought to you ought to put together a committee of stakeholders, and give them a deadline, and come up with a finite number of reasonable options, and then come back with those. Now, what that does to your deadline, I I don't know. I think just I think. Doing one thing, absolutely, putting all the kids in here or shutting the whole thing down, even, either one of those, to me, is, it seems kind of blunt-headed. I, I, I think uh, really studying it in a deeper way is what's called for. Ma'am, you've been very patient. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I don't believe Act 46 was designed, <clears throat> excuse me, to take educational opportunities away from our students. Um, I think that uh, that was not their, the legislative intent at all. Um, Art in the cart in the elementary is going to take art away from our children. Um, there won't be any chance to do clay. There won't be any chance to do paint because I'll be in different rooms. The maintenance people will have a fit because there's going to be stuff everywhere in all the rooms, increasing their time. Uh, I, I just don't think it's fair to our kids that they will have to have art on the cart. I just want to say that in those early larger meetings, we did speak of utilizing the art. Megan, I can't, can't hear you. Um, in our early meetings this summer and fall, we did speak about wanting to use the auditorium at least for our art and music program. Um, I would like to continue using those buildings, or those rooms. You know, I think we're gonna find inequities, like for instance, you guys have a full day four-year-old preschool, that's something we do not. I think there's gonna have to be a little bit of give and take between, you know, the inequities on each campus and coming to some kind of conclusion that benefits us both. Um, well, I just wanna say, uh, we've been using the music program, I can't imagine doing um, music and not having a designated space with equipment and maybe Holly can talk to, you know speak a little bit about that but um, and I just wanted to kind of get to Janie's point too about the trauma I mean I would use that word really for our community I, and I don't know maybe you feel the same way in Stockbridge but our community has been <laughs> traumatized in the last few years for you know going through this experience of do we keep our schools open? Where are our kids going to go to middle school, high school? Um, I don't even have a middle school or high school age student, but I can imagine <laughs> it's, it's not really easy. Difficult. I, it's not easy. No, yeah. It's not. So I just feel like, for that same reason, I would say let's not think about cutting the most we can cut. Um, and remember that our back is not against the wall. We have a good number in our budget. Um, my son didn't know how to read music or play an instrument, and he can play his he can play songs on a saxophone. It's awesome. And I want all the Stockbridge kids to have that opportunity too. Um, so if that means you know we do have music, we just have to do it in the multi-purpose. Do everything in the multi-purpose. Yeah, exactly. Wait, 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 wait one at a time. So Do Stockbridge folks really want Rochester kids to lose programming so everything feels equal? We don't want, no, no, but we can't even get a budget on an extra building. Like, that's all we asked for, it was a shed, and we didn't even get that. <laughs> well, hopefully we will have that for the next Maybe. Year. No, 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 I, I would like to say that it's, a, as far as I'm concerned,
concerned on this board, and Carl and I have talked about this, that it's a real priority. And we're very disappointed that it's not here today because it was talked about. Um, um, and it's something, yeah, and I, and I hear you, that it's, 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 it's too bad that we can't put it in the budget right now because the extra space is the quid pro quo, as far as I'm concerned, for allowing a section of this building to stay open for us. That you, you you know you need to do both, and it, and then I, I I I would feel bad about keeping open a section of the building if I didn't if we didn't come come through with that on you. Yeah. Um. Again, just to to uh, reiterate, I think saying is that it ends up being a slap in the face. It says it's a slap in the face to another school to say what we've been doing is not possible for us and it sounds arrogant. 
Thank you. Sorry, it sounds a little arrogant, and this is what I've heard from these people, and I know that's hard, and I have my kids in this school. I don't want to take away his things, but we have to form a partnership here. And to form a partnership, we have to hear the other side. And I don't feel like Rochester is yet hearing the other side yet. And I think that's part of this process you're talking about, Rob, where we have to balance it out. But it's really hard for us to say, we can't go out, we can't go without, we can't go without. When, there's, when our partner <coughs> has been making do in a lot of very creative ways, and I've done workshops there, and I've been in that school, and I've worked with those teachers, um, they may do in a lot of creative ways. And Stockbridge stood by Rochester. Yeah, that's our right. Power. That's they did. The and promises were made. We I were mean, promised. I don't know they're the same promises. We were ever. promised a second language. We were promised a lot of things that are not happening. I'd like to read a paragraph on page 10 of the merger that says, faced with this situation, and it's talking about the um, kind of the funding and the cost per pupil and Rochester losing the fandom students. Faced with this situation, Rochester will need to decrease spending in the amount of 335000 in order to get per student spending to a roughly equal place. This will be achieved by closure of the operation of a school for grades 7 through 12 and tuitioning students at a lower cost and by modifying the elementary grade delivery model. Right, which is what we've done. Exactly. We have, we've, 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 um, so I think at this point um, we don't have we have some information about about closing the building um, no, we I don't have an, an, we don't have information about uh, additional space at Stockbridge it is nearly 10 o'clock so we've been at this for uh, uh, close to four hours um, I think what we need to do is we need to probably bring back at the next meeting which is where we're going to really finalize that um, some information about what we can uh, uh, what we can do uh, at, at Stockbridge to uh, in, in increase some of the space. Absolutely. And as Rob said, I, I, the idea of you know finding things that you know fi finding uh, I mean beyond just saying let's not do let's 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 not do classes in uh, in the or let's not do instruction in a hallway. Let's have you know an area that has a, 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 a title and sped spaces like like are like, like, like in one of these buildings <clears throat> let's also look at what we can do that would that would be something that would be whether it's a language program or a maker space or a, a, a stem thing but let's let's try to come back and have some information that's a little bit closer let's also remember that the point of this meeting now what we're trying to accomplish uh, by the 12th is to come up with that number that that that, that 4,000 foot number or 40,000 foot number that says the, 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 the voters of the towns of Stockbridge and Rochester are going to pay this amount of money. And that's, 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 that's the total figure. We don't have to decide whether that money is going to be spent on, you know, on, 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 I mean, a lot of the things we talked about today were, were important. I think clarifying a lot of the budget numbers were important. But the big picture is that what we need to have is, is 30 days in advance of our annual school meeting, we have to have a dollar figure that we think is reasonable and prudent and fair to our taxpayers and fair to our kids. Because that's the job of the board is to balance, you know, in, 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 to, to, to balance what, what, we're, what we're asking our communities to pay for and what we're saying our kids deserve and what our kids need, need to have. So I think we've got, you know, we, we've given you the information we have on the building, but I don't know that we can really, really take this conversation fruitfully any farther because we don't have, we don't, we, we don't have enough of the information. I think uh, we've gotten a good start with understanding that we really cannot. There's, if they're, they're one of the things we were hoping that Plouffe could tell us was you can shut this building down much more easily than you could, you could, you could shut that building down. How can you make some of these things work? We got, an informa we got some information then. We really can't, we, we, we really can't uh, 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 completely close down the buildings. So I think let's, let's uh, I, I would suggest we table this discussion uh, uh, for tonight, and we come back to it next week when we have more information and we have more planning from the administration. I need to talk to you on the first Yeah, Right. Before, I don't want to go down to a last meeting. Yeah.
Yes. Yeah. No, we're going to do. We, we would do that. So, Carl, we just need to make clarification too. By next week's meeting, we won't have additional information on the building. It's going to take. Well, we we, we might have on some of the ideas. You might have some you of the have information, information on the module. That's we right. Can, and we also have more information on electrical usage, electrical usage. Because there's two meters. Fuel and fuel metering. For we can metering. analyze that. Yeah. I'm not yeah, sure right. about the fuel because I think it comes out of one of those small one. tank and a large tank. And I think Okay. What we do have to remember is that in the budget that was presented tonight that came in way under budget, it did have this building kind of status quo and the elementary building status quo. So we can only get better, but if nothing else, because we're coming down to a time crunch, we're coming down to um, a lot going on, remember the numbers in this budget. I think the other thing, just for clarification, is important, and this didn't dawn on me until a couple days ago, because I was continuing to hear this very legitimate concern about, we were told that the high school would close and it's not closing. We were told that the high school would close and it's not closing. I think there was some, um, I think there was a crystal clarity on what it meant to close the building, because this high school building is closing. We're, we're, we're not, at this point, needing this space right now. The issue is the programs that were never just high school programs. They were K-12 programs, which is art, music. Well, One Planet isn't K-12, but it's but it's K-6. So there were there were uses in this building, the high school building, that were not high school uses, and that's where some of the where some of the rub is coming. Yeah. Holly has never had the opportunity to give her. Probably yank 
uh, yank it. Gotta be careful. Yeah, it, it, it protects you if you go the other direction. If your Both tax direction. rate goes Both up, direction. you don't. It won't force. The, it protects the taxpayer Correct. from having to right. have a five percent tax hike in one year. Right. No, and yeah. I think it's a good thing. I'm just saying that if right. we take advantage of that gap. And then Which they, would be a really cool way to pay for our modular that we've been just talking about, right. kind of slicing the issue. Exactly. Um, but that's, I don't want to see any town or any taxpayer pay a huge penalty and yeah. watch our tax rates go up because they yank that and yeah. do this law thing and watch them, right. you know what I mean? And I remember him saying, I was like, wait, that, that, yeah. we need to go back to that. We, know I think, more about we, need, we need more information on I that. think we asked, Annie, didn't you ask tonight? To ask David to find out what that he'll find out the number is. I'm, I'm just saying, I don't want to be a legislator. Yeah, we're actually going to have one time expense in case we don't have this year. I don't remember. Are we allowed to do that? Do you acknowledge that this would be a viable? Yeah, we probably that 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 should be part of the rugby and eventually be part of the school. Um, I think we'll probably put that to committee together at the next meeting when we, when we have a better idea of which way we're, we're just in general what the scope of that committee's work should be. Once we have an idea of is it, is it looking at I me mean, because we're one district, it should be looking at the, 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 the school uses of all the district's buildings. And if we're going to be, you know, if some of the programming may, you know, if, if, to speak to Rob's point, the idea of if we put a, a maker space or some kind of STEM facility in Stockbridge, you know, that might change how this building was used or how other buildings were used. So I think we need to have uh, at least some idea of uh, what the options are on, uh, down the valley there. But I think that I think that we need to. Uh, so I want to put that off to the next meeting. So we have an idea of just if the modular is even feasible. So this is not necessarily curriculum-driven. It's really yeah, something that the community would use as a sort of as a, as a business hub in another way. So well, we yeah. There's see the the just some she has an idea. Yeah. No. There's. 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 And I, I. I hear what you're saying. Like a co-working space or some. Okay. Well, it's, it's not exactly that. Okay. In that plan, you've got to be careful about the kids. People being in here that want fingerprinted and all that kind of thing. If they're going to be mixing with the kids, so I'm just. That's an issue. You know, or it could be an issue. Yeah. Okay. Session to discuss a personnel matter. I so move. Second. Like second, second. second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. The board is going to go into person into executive Come session on. to discuss a personnel matter. <laughs> no action is anticipated after that meeting. The, the board will adjourn then. Uh, thank you very much.